Chevron 1 encoded. Chevron 2 encoded. Chevron 3 encoded. Chevron 4 encoded. Chevron 5 encoded. Chevron 6 encoded. Chevron 7 locked. Good luck out there. Hello and welcome, everyone, to Stargate Flames of Hope, Episode 1, where we are very excited to be here and excited to get to our mission, our very first mission. It's very exciting. Um, so we're all going to go around. We're going to say who we are, not accidentally unhook our microphones from the table clamp, and uh, who we're playing. I will start with myself. I am Laugh Love Lenny, and I will be playing Ixora, the At A Turin, who is a scientist and just... Love science and history and languages and people and not violence, not so much. So, uh, someone whose answer might be different to their likes and dislikes would be Deception Check's character. How are you? No, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay this evening. Um, I'll be playing Fiddler. Uh, he's a Tolan, which is a, a human variant from uh, from a faraway planet that's had some troubles, if you know anything about the Tolans. Um, and uh, he's a bit of an engineer and a bit of a troublemaker. Wonderful. Someone who's never been a troublemaker a day in their life is D20 Coup de Gras. How are you? You're a terrible liar. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing Golrick. Uh, he is a um jafar rebel and uh, uh he's a scout and his mission will not be complete until every jafar is free from the gold tyranny it's an excellent answer and how do you feel about the global tyranny shiny pilot uh well shiny pilot has a lot of thoughts about it but uh lieutenant jake miller who i'm playing tonight he's uh you know going in for his first time with the sgc he's probably heard a few stories here and there but doesn't really know about the gold tyranny the gold menace on uh till later on i'm sure in the season so um <laughs> he's just happy to be here and maybe hoping to uh go through that gate he's heard about maybe have his own team someday Someone who has a team and the gate because they are the gate master would be our gate master, Nagatosaurus. How are you this evening? I'm great. I'm very excited to jump into this. I spent pretty much all day after work, you know, finishing up the the the, the story beat to the episode, and you know, figuring out what the heck you guys were going to get do today in this first episode so first official episode last episode we had a bit of a session zero where we didn't necessarily create characters but we did introduce ourselves to each other um so i do just want to go around super quick and i know you guys said who you were playing but if you could just give me just a very brief description of your character just so we kind of have that refresher because i know it has been a little bit of time um so let's start with um, let's start with our stripper, Gorik. <laughs> yes, Gorik is, well, not a stripper, but obviously just has no qualms with, um, uh, being nude in front of others. Uh, he, uh, very serious, very determined, um, as are many Jafar, but, uh, he, he comes from a, a, tr a tribal planet, a uh, pr primitive planet, and is really impressed with the uh, technologies and things. The uh, Tari? Tari, yeah. Uh, provide and is excited to work with him. Yeah, absolutely. And he's definitely going to have a lot of opportunities to maybe get his hands on some of that weaponry and that tech that the Tauri can provide. Um, speaking of the Tauri, Shiny Pilot, could you describe Lieutenant Jake Miller for us very briefly? Yeah, um, Lieutenant Jake Miller is a young, younger officer, mid-20s in the Air Force, United States, Tari, planet Earth. 
Um, he has been selected for the Stargate program, hopefully because he was a good officer or had good credentials and is worthy enough to be there for the SGC. Um, and he is a somewhat charismatic man who just wants to go out and explore the world and help defend planet Earth. Good old, you know, Stargate priorities. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the, it's not Star Trek, but the prime directive, essentially. Um, he's definitely going to have a lot of opportunities to do that this season. Um, now let's switch on over to um, another one of our alien friends, Fiddler. Can you describe your character for us very briefly? Okay, yeah. Fiddler is is young for the amount of combat he's seen and the scars that he has. Uh, he's, he's shorter, um, kind of thin, uh, definitely not dressed as well as Jake is. He's, he's wearing like, you know, a, a sports Jersey. He's got, you know, uh, his scarf on hat. He's carrying a really large gun on his back most of the time. Uh, and a lot of electronics. And he, and he seems like, uh, you know, as a Tolan, he's, he's technologically advanced over most of what the Tari has. So he's always trying to, he's always looking at, at different parts of technology, trying to figure it out. He's like those little dogs when they, when they see a, a squirrel and they stop it's technology. It's like, Ooh, I know what that does. And so uh he's a bit of a he's a bit of a chaos gremlin. Um and he's on like his his third set of three strikes. Mm -hmm. Um and and he's, you know, this is like his last chance to actually stay stick around with the uh the teams. Well, let's let's uh I think he'll do fine. I don't think he'll <laughs> blow it, you know, no pun intended, because I do know he has he does have explosive. explosives. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then finally, last but not least, uh, Lindy, could you describe your character Exora for us? Yes, thank you. Hello. I was playing a dangerous game of eating while we were all going around and saying things. And I, was I waited. Like, I waited. I was gonna, I'm not sure if she's waiting to, to not <laughs> torment me as we do her accidentally, continually for the past five years. But I was determined to be ready. And so here I am. I'm done eating. I'm good. Um, <laughs> I'm playing... Ixora, uh, she is a seven foot two, a Turin woman. The, a Turin are kind of like a, an offshoot of the Nox, very Nox adjacent. Um, she's she's tall. She's a tall like bean pole, very rail thin. Um, always has like some books and things on her book bag, constant companion. Um, just a big old science nerd, because you know every Stargate team needs a good nerd. Absolutely. And she's definitely going to have a lot of opportunities to flex that brain muscle of hers over the, the next coming episodes. So thank you guys very much for describing your characters. Thank you for that refresher. It was for our audience as well as me because it's been a bit of a time. Um, and then real quick, just to kind of recap what our episode zero was, um, it was very, you know, uh, very relaxed. I gave you guys a lot of information about the Stargate program, how the Stargate Phoenix program specifically is an offshoot of the main Stargate command, where their mission essentially is to create alliances with alien races, um, uh, offshoots of humans like the Tolan and others who are, um, you know, trying to get out from under the thumb of the Gua'uld, all those different things. And they have created this Stargate base on a planet of undisclosed galactic coordinates that um, kind of serves as a base of operations to, to you know, get all of those things going. We had some introductions to General Philip Kevin Lawyer, who is in charge of the Stargate Phoenix site. Um, he is a very level-headed, no-nonsense military, you know, general. Um, he definitely has some unconventional ways of talking. He essentially said, you know, you guys are trial by fire and you're you know, upcoming mission, all those things. Uh, you guys met the Haven Council, which are the different representatives for the different um, races that are a part of the, um, the, the Stargate program. Haven is the town that is on the surface of the planet that, you know, um, not only Stargate Phoenix members, but um, kind of like displaced people who are, who are trying to find a new life or are in transit to finding a new planet, things like that. 
Um, and then we also were introduced to Phoenix One, Stargate Phoenix One, where they are essentially the forward group. They're the equivalent to SG-1. Um, they have all of the interesting things happen to them, all of the 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 crazy stuff, you know, all the stories, all the all of the declassified, well, not declassified, but declassified for Phoenix members, all of their their mission reports are legendary and they get passed around like like wives tales you know just trying to see what they've done and figure out what's happening um we got a very brief um tour of the stargate phoenix bake that was rather rudely interrupted by an off-world gate activation where the group led by haim who is a tokra um um uh He's a Tokra. He's um, the host's name is Haim and the symbiote's name is Danos. He is the gate operator. Um, he was your tour guide for your, um, you know, first day on the base. But like I said, you guys were interrupted by that alarm and he led you into the gate room where you guys heard the tail end of a tr uh, essentially a, a distress call where SG um, P. 12 was phoning in essentially stating that they were taking fire um they were surrounded and they were requesting backup that was about 15 20 minutes ago you guys were sent off by general pk lawyer with um jesse who is essentially your handler she is the um once the the tour is done she will be your main point of contact for anything going forward Jesse led you guys to the ready rooms where you picked up your packs, you know, changed clothes into tactical gear if that's what you wanted to do, things like that. And now you are standing in the gate room. Uh, as you gather before the ramp, the large cylindrical object spins clockwise, locks in a chevron, spins counterclockwise, locks in another chevron and continues to do this until all chevrons are locked there is this massive like almost deafening swoosh sound as the event horizon slams forward out of the stargate before sinking and settling back into a um like almost a, a calming reflecting pool of water in this circle, this massive circle that's in the center of this room. Now, who would like to step through first? No one, you know, you guys got, okay, Fiddler, um, you guys got the- I, I push him out of the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, you guys got the go ahead from General Lawyer. Um, you guys heard Did Haim over the, the speaker saying, uh, okay, guys, you know, good luck. You're good to go. Keep in comms if you can. Otherwise, you know, check in did, uh, when you've got some time. Good luck. Did we get a quick mission brief? Because, I mean, it's a firefight we're charging into. Is it outside the gate? Is it beyond it? Like when we were getting gear ready? Did we get told so, what we're marching into? Excellent question. While you were in the, um, essentially the locker rooms getting your gear, the... Um, your handler, Jesse, gave you guys kind of a rundown of what has been going on. This planet is dubbed um, M7T-957. It was discovered uh, several months ago by um, one of the scientists who found the address in one of the ancient databases that they had access to, and they you know, dialed it and they found that it was a habitable planet that they could go into. Um, after, you know, about a month of exploring, they came across a town where, um, you know, just friendly seeming humans lived. They were uh, pretty much, you know, medieval time frame, very, um, um, like carts and wagons and and not necessarily the most sanitary and it's just you know it's muddy it's gross it's just a it's it's not the the most advanced civilization that they have ever come across what struck phoenix command's interest in this planet is that about a month ago one of the scientists on the team was um 
reading over some texts that they had in the village libra library. I say library loosely. It was like 10 books. Um, <laughs> they discovered some text that spoke of a magical, mystical tower deep in the woods that would explode into a thousand blinding lights in times of danger. Not just the team, but Phoenix Command themselves believed that it was possible this command tower or this tower could be um, very similar to the um, the outpost, the ancient outpost in Antarctica on Earth, which is essentially it's a, a battle station where they can um, send out drones and protect Earth from extraterrestrial um, threats. They also uh, theorized that it could also be a uh, command tower of an Atlantis class uh, ship, which if you don't know, Atlantis is an ancient uh, city in the Pegasus galaxy that also has star drive capabilities. So the entire city can go into space essentially. Um, so they're thinking it's one of two things. It's either an ancient outpost um, with possible ancient secrets that they could gather information from, or it's a very slim chance, but they're kind of hoping that it's an Atlantis class, you know, starship. But a month ago, SGP-12 was sent out to investigate, to gather information, uh, to speak with the villagers, kind of find out what was going on. After about three days, they lost contact with SGP-12. Another team was sent out to look for them, but there was no traces of them. So after another week of searching, General Lawyer pulled back that additional team and essentially cordoned off the planet, said it was off limits until, you know, further information could be gathered. There has been no communication since about two weeks ago when that team was pulled back until today. So they have you guys essentially going in, trying to figure out, you know, what's happening, providing backup if possible. It was about 20 minutes ago that that first, you know, alarm went off and they dialed in and that's that symbol came or the signal came through. So it's possible things have calmed down. You guys really don't know what you're going into at this moment. Um. The only thing then beyond that, good brief, thank you, is would I'd like to have Jake Miller, if he could have, he'd definitely be thinking tactically, what is on the other side of the gate? Like, is, is it a clear open area <laughs> or is there woods? What do we get? Yeah. What's directly on the other side of the gate? Before so, <laughs> you know, um, um, not many people have been to this planet. That team, that science team that originally found the texts for the ancient command tower have been there. Um, and then uh, SGP-12 and then the SG team that was sent to find them and was unsuccessful. They're the only ones who have been there. So it's probably a total of about 12, 15 people maybe from Phoenix Command. Directly outside of the Stargate is... Um, Pretty much every Stargate is up on a platform, so you have stairs mm -hmm. that kind of go down. It's um, about, let me see, how many feet? Sorry, I'm throwing these at you. The only reason why no, I'm thinking no, no. is because if we're about to go into possible gunfire on the other side of the gate, he's thinking, is there anything we can hide behind? Look, we've yeah. watched like six, yeah. five seasons of Stargate in the past, like, like two oh, or three no. week period of time. It's, you know, yeah, just, yeah. We just, we just watched the episode where uh, so one person got shot in the leg on their exit through. It was uh, yep. Jacob. Yeah. Jacob Carter. Yep. <laughs> yep. Sounds about right. But yeah, no. So, um, Coming out of the Stargate, you know that it faces east. There is um, a DHD about like the standard distance away from the uh, um, from the Stargate itself. DHD okay. being a dial home device, which is what you punch in to, you know, go places. Um, other than that, there is um, like a dirt road that extends further east. And then there is very thick, um, like wooded... Uh, it's not quite mangroves, but it's like those swampy trees kind of thing. Um, this is this is a swamp. It's a swamp planet. There, there's swamps <laughs> everywhere. Sweet. But there's not a ton of cover directly as you come out of the Stargate. Just um, you know the the 
the dial home device and then off to the sides there's like brush and things like that okay got it okay thank you absolutely not a problem so uh Gorick, i understand you're pushing fiddler well, out of the way <laughs> well no i i have I, I edit that decision okay okay instead i grab his shoulder and say just a moment and i pull the pin on a flashbang <laughs> okay. I, I, I took that for about three seconds and then throw it into the gate. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. I want you to make me. Um, hold on one second. I have rules for grenades. Take, now, take are... We to flashbang ourselves before we ever get in there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> we, I just got to make sure you don't go into the gate. For a few more seconds. Jake's yeah. coming up right behind you guys watching that grenade go out. <laughs> uh, if it's our guys on the other side, yeah. <laughs> okay, They're just have a bad day. They'll live. They'll go live. ahead and roll me um just like a general uh dexterity check. You are proficient with this because you know you're you know how to use your grenades. So you can add your proficiency and your dexterity to your roll. Okay. Um whoops. That'd be plus two, so uh, 13. 13, okay, perfect. Um, yeah, you are very, you know, you plop it into the into the event horizon. It makes like a little boop sound, and it's gone. And then I push Fiddler through. <laughs> after, hey, after hey. Second count through. <laughs> it goes in backwards like falling over okay 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 interesting all right so um go in right after him okay so as fiddler as you fall through the stargate and gork as you you know dart in after him jake fast um, charge behind him if you need to add that in there <laughs> yeah and then jake follows you know not far behind and then Ixora. <laughs> I, I i i just kind of blink twice Register what's just happened and then calmly proceed wow. forth through. Yes. Okay. Okay. You're doing, the, you're doing the Nox walk. Nox walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just very calmly. Very extremely. calm. Yeah. Very collected, unlike the others. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So, um, Fiddler, mm -hmm. you were the first one through. So as <laughs> you you've gone through Stargates numerous times before, you are familiar with this sensation. Um. But despite that, every single time you go through there, it's still, it, it, it's unnatural. It's very strange. Um, it's not cold. It's not hot. It's more so like um, an absence of temperature. It's very disorienting. Um, you fall kind of fully into it and you feel this, this crushing pressure around you that increases and increases and increases until it's almost too much to bear. And then you come flying out and you smack down onto the the platform where um, the the Stargate is. I imagine he rolls all the way down to the dialer. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. He just kind of goes tumbling down the stairs across like this. Gr sorry, gross, muddy yep. ground. Yep. Kind of like thunks into the back of the 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 DHD. Um, Gork, you come kind of stum not stumbling, but just kind of like very quickly, you know, dart in next with Miller right behind you. And then a couple seconds later, not very long, uh, Ixora just calmly walks through. And you guys all get that same absence of temperature, that crushing pressure that seems almost too much before it dissipates and you are through to the other end. <sighs> um, the oppressive humidity of this planet hits you like instantly. You are, um, well, not Fiddler, Fiddler's in the ground, but the remainder of you are on a small pot platform that the Stargate rests on, and there are five steps leading down to a muddy but relatively firm ground, um, and then you guys see the dial home device where Fiddler is, you know, currently collecting himself, and then off to the sides you see just thick, swampy forest. What would you like to do? Uh, uh Go ahead. I was just going to say, Jake Miller lets out a big <laughs> like gas because he, he unconsciously sucked in his breath before he went through. Yeah. Uh, and then just orientation, eyes looking everywhere and, and keeps moving forward like you're like he was taught at least. Keep moving. Keep moving. Okay, keep going. And he's looking and he's scanning. He's looking and he's scanning. He's like, okay, 
what's here what's there and absolutely absolutely so you descend down the steps um kind of you get closer to the dhd where fiddler is you can see on the other side of the dhd is the spent flashbang grenade um it looks like gork was able to toss it pretty far um make me everyone who would like to uh you can make me perception checks yes yes please oh jake you're killing me buddy Right. Uh, Idea fiddler, the mud will keep the bugs off us. <laughs> I, why'd you do that? I wanted to be there when Jake came through. I wanted to see the look on his face when he went through the first time. <laughs> ah, I didn't even get to see it this time. It's no fun. Throws a blob of mud at Gork's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Spot. No. I enjoy it is too much. <laughs> uh, let's see okay so jake and fiddler you guys see essentially what i described just you know um muddy ground the platform the um swampy forest on both sides you guys do see that past the dial home device there is a um muddy worn pathway that leads further east um uh, who else was next? Let's see. Must be that way to the village. Yes. Gorik, you see... Um, it looks like in the ground, um, it looks like there are uh, footprints, uh, specifically boot prints, just about four sets of them. Um, they kind of cluster around the front of the dial home device. So you're assuming that's where they were standing when they were dialing to make their distress, distress, distress call. Um, and then you see there are a couple of like spent bullet cases on the ground, um, just kind of in this general area of the DHD. Finally, mm. um, Ixora you see um you see everything everybody else sees but you notice that the boot prints are standard military issue by the Tauri. Mm -hmm. um it looks like one pair appears to be male the other pair three pair three pairs appear to be um um that's not right not male but bigger in size yeah um and then the other three pair range from like medium yeah, yeah, range from <laughs> from medium to small. Um, you see that um, those are the only prints present. Interesting. Um, also, Exora's hair has grown at least like two to three inches from the humidity oh, yeah. already. It's yeah, just, just frizzed out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, um, I love it. Yeah, this would probably require another perception check. Is there any obvious signs of battle going on? Is there gunfire? Is there any explosions? So, but is guys, there any active though? You guys hear, you know, sounds oh, of birds. swamp. You hear like a frog, like bunches of frogs croaking. Um, you hear birds off in the distance. You hear like the cry of an animal, kind of way off to 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 the west. Um, you guys don't hear or really see any signs of a battle other than what's currently present at the DHD. Hmm. If you right, guys, guys would like to know more, would you, you like can make... to know more. <laughs> would you like to know more? Yeah. Um, you can either make an investigation check or in a survival check to kind of deduce what's been going on here. Ooh. It's up to you, whichever you prefer. Oh, God. I will keep uh, a lookout uh, uh. then if anybody else wants to look That's around. my best thing to roll. I, I will roll. Oh no. Um, <laughs> Apparently the swamp planets are oh. not my thing. Not <laughs> yeah. mine either. Oh, my Anybody's Lord. thing. <laughs> we're gonna be it's, fine. You know, what? Jake it's, you, know what? It's, you know, it's because we're a new team together. This is our first mission we're exactly. not working together we're to not get working advantage. together we're just doing things. Yeah. Yeah, you guys good. are you, you're getting used to it. Jake this would you like to roll? Roll a check, please. Uh, Save us. I should. Um, all right, I'll do a. Uh, you said Come investigation on. or survival. Yeah. Or survival, whichever you prefer. Mm. No, there you hey, go. all right. Hey, twenty-one. Soldier boy. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so um, essentially, anyone who rolled below a ten, you guys, um, I'm too distracted by like the the plant and wildlife. I'm just... Yeah, they're. 
there's a lot of alien plant and wildlife here. You don't <sighs> see any animals, but you can, um, mm. well, you see a bunch of insects or like buzzing. Those are animals. It, okay. it looks like a, um, like a Tauri dragonfly, but it's, mm. it's, it's smaller in size and it's more oval as opposed to like a cylinder. Like how they are very- There's a species of mosquito. Long of throat. <laughs> I stab it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. It it's it's crunchy, um, but it's it's a little sweet. It's it's not when well, you know it's not gross. Kind of tastes okay. Not bad. Um, no, Jake Miller, you see you see everything that I described before. You see the different sets of boot prints, you see the bullet casings, you see um like scuffs like it looks like they were kind of moving around quite a bit um but you do notice with that perception check that the um boot prints seem to have come out of the foliage to the north um they seem to be extending into the swamp it looks like they came out that from the north it would have been south for them heading towards the dhd okay so they came out to the dhd dialed it and then ran back in you don't see any prints going back in. You just see prints coming out. Okay. They disappear. Uh, you see, I'd assume Jake is hiding behind the DHD for cover while we're looking around this stuff, and he's kind of looking at her. Says, "Uh, guys, uh, the boots stop at the DHD. There is no other traces visible. Um, are, you, are you sure? Oh yeah, they're gone." Okay. Um, any of you guys ever encountered something like this before where people just uh, cease to be walking? Yes, but I do not think that the SG-12 team or SG... SP? SGP. S SGP. You can do... You can do... SGP-12 team. Yeah, Wait, SGP. SGP such? Or you, could, you can do Phoenix if you want to do Phoenix team. Oh. That's fine as well. Whatever you guys want to do. I'm going to end up saying SG teams. <laughs> that's totally fine too. It's still, it's a Stargate program. So that's fine. Yes. I don't Do want to be believe like the SGP 12 <laughs> team is capable of such feats though. Uh, I seriously doubt it too. Unless they uh, got beamed up or something. Beamed is up? that possible? Where... I, I, the, Asgard, the Asgardians do that from time to time. Yes. Oh, also, it could be something perhaps along the lines of a flying creature or a device picks them up. All of a sudden, Jake Miller thinks instantly to kind of look up more and look around. He's See, kind of nervous, like, oh, I didn't think. Large <laughs> here. Let's stop thinking about what got them and go find them. Uh, Retracing I, their steps may prove useful to find out what they were say, fleeing from. I, well, you guys figure that out. I'm going to make sure this DHD works so we can get home. All right. That sounds like a good plan. Fiddler, if you need anything, let us know. Ixora, Gorik, you guys want to push ahead following those steps? I've already left. All right, <laughs> go ahead, Gork, then. Uh Jake <laughs> then will tail Ixora. He'll hang with her, and but keep an eyesight of Fiddler. If they go into the woods, Jake will stop at the edge of the woods to keep an eye on Fiddler. Okay. Okay, so um, Fiddler, you can go ahead and make me a science check to um you know see what's going on with the dhd gork I, what are you yeah can i make ahead. that an engineering check absolutely okay 100 percent uh gork oh, what are you on. oh no i've rolled Hold so on. many twos i can't i can't <laughs> roll out a single digit i have a plus five you, i think you guys might need to refresh because jesus christ um <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm refreshing good that, refreshing i yeah. as far oh, as you can tell any attack as right, far as ahead. you can tell, there is nothing wrong with this DHD. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, it looks perfect to me. Good to go. Okay. Go so, right. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say just a quick question. We all have radios, right? Does Absolutely. everybody have radios? It's part of our kit. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Every everybody has. Sure. Um, everybody would have a radio or some kind of communication device. Everybody would have um, like a standard pack that has like. We have all know. the SG gear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everything's standard. Yeah. I wanted to make sure it wouldn't be like, oh, you know, somebody doesn't have a radio because they don't have it in their kit. Like, I don't nope. know all the nope. kit loadouts yet. Yeah. No, okay. no, no. Um, perfect. Okay, Gorik, what are you? Where are you going specifically? I'm going to head down the trail, but okay. uh, I'm going to do so with uh, trying to stay unnoticed. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Yeah, absolutely. So you're heading east along the trail. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So go ahead and make, um, I believe this game has stealth checks. There is. Yes. yes. Yep. I do see it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and make me a stealth check, please. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Um, you kind of stick to, you're not on the path. You kind of like dip into the foliage that's along the side of the path and you're able to duck down and you don't think anybody would be able to see you at this point. Oh. Or any local wildlife, I hope. Yeah, as far as you can tell, no w wildlife can see you either. Very good. Okay. How Let's far see. do you go? Wait, how long are... Do we know how far it is to the village? I think you mentioned that, but I... It's about, it's about 15 miles to the village following the path. It's a ways. That's why it took um, Stargate, uh, the, the science team, so long to find it. All right. Well, uh, I suppose I head down uh, about a mile and then check in. Okay. And I'll probably do that every, every mile or so. Okay. And Ixora, Jake? Oh, Sorry, I'm, go ahead. I was told to follow Gorek, so I'm just, I'm following behind, like... 30 feet, just so he can be stealthy. I'm just walking behind calmly, serenely. It, as they're moving then, Jake would radio to Fiddler. Fiddler? How's it look Not, at the DHD? I, it looks fine. I, fine. You know, I, you can't, sure? I, can't, I, can't, I, I can't see anything wrong. I, I mean, All right. All right, it looks come okay. Back. Come on back, Fiddler. Uh, Ixor and Gork are getting ahead of us up there. All right, I'll double time it. All right. Gork... And Fiddler, just start jogging. Click, click on the radio. Y'all got anything up there? Are you still following the tracks? So I will say the path goes east, but the tracks that the, the team left go north. Mm. They go off the path into the swamp to the north. Oh, okay. I thought we lost track. That was okay. Mm. It disappears into the the swamp, but if you go into the swamp and you follow it, you can see signs and and you know with another that survival we can check, you track guys. them. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's just exactly. not on a trail. Yeah, right. I, I imagine we're probably going that way then. Uh, yeah, I think I think okay. we would have taken that route. Okay, so you guys absolutely. Are, you guys are following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, then then Jake and Fiddler will keep following the trails to get up to you guys, and I'll just pray to you to that he's coming behind you guys, so it's that's uh, us. <laughs> okay. Don't shoot. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay, so you guys begin to head north. Um, how far do you guys want to walk? I know I asked Gorik this, but how long do you follow this trail? That's when I was on a on a, on a trail. On a path, yeah. <laughs> Um, as long as the trail doesn't go cold, I suppose we keep following it. Okay, That's... yeah. Make me, um, one person can make the check and then one other person can assist, um, for advantage. Somebody go ahead and make me a survival check for the first half of tracking these prints. Since I'm with Gorik, yeah, I will, uh, assist him in okay. tracking. Okay, so Gorik, go ahead and make that survival check. For a 22. Perfect. Okay, so you guys are able to keep the trail. Um, as you're walking, you notice that it looks like at times they were running, they were kind of just like, um, like stumbling through, not stumbling, but like crashing through the brush. Like you see broken branches, trampled leaves, trampled foliage, um, like heavy prints in the mud, like they were running. Um, and then at other times it's almost like you can't see it at all. It's like they were, maybe they were, you know, being a little bit more cautious about um, what tracks they were leaving. You uh, follow for about... Um, they definitely feared being hunted. Yes, yes. You can definitely get that impression. Um, you guys follow for about three hours before um, you get to a point where the trail has gone a little cold. You can see like sporadic signs, but you're not quite sure what direction they are going in at this time. Um, 
If you would like, you guys can stop here and investigate, or you could make another survival check to, you know, find the path again, whatever you guys like. Hmm. Um, I'd say try uh, and find the path again would be a good yeah. start. Okay. I mean, if you guys want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. While they're so then... finding the path, I want to, I'd like to make a nature check to see uh, how the area around looks. Just like how recently was this disturbed? That kind of thing. Perfect. Absolutely. So go ahead and make that nature check. Um, Fiddler and Miller, one of you can make the check with advantage. The other person would be helping. Whatever you guys decide. Do you want me to, Fiddler, or you want to? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good at looking for things with investigation. Then I can investigate go ahead. quite well. Go investigate. All right. Let's please roll higher than a single digit. Oh, look hey. at that. Hey. Nice. Nice. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, Jake, you and I are going places. We're going places. <laughs> so you guys take a look around and you see where um, where this area, like where the trail kind of disappears. It looks like they moved. So um, you guys were kind of expecting this path has not in the last three hours. It has really not strayed from going directly north. So they were going directly south when they were heading towards mm -hmm. the DHD. Um, it really hasn't strayed, but it looks like at this point it disappears and you guys have to kind of like fan out a little bit and about um, like 200 feet off from where that main trail of tracks is. You guys find like a little um, kind of looks like a little um Maybe they had a campfire going or something like that. There was some kind of, they stopped here for some extended period of time. Uh, and then you guys do pick up the trail still heading north. It just looks like they kind of, you know, moved off to the side for whatever reason. They just kind of went like a little zigzag there. Um, Ixora, your nature check? Yes, 22. 22. Okay, so um, based off of the... Um, just kind of like where things were broken and trampled, the state of decay and some of the branches and things like that. It seems like they came this way about four hours ago. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Gorek, you have questions? I'm confused. Were we not like 20 minutes behind the communication? Mm-hmm. Hmm. That doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't, yep. Okay, that doesn't add up. All right. Nope, not quite. You yeah, you guys, um, you guys got the communication, and then twenty minutes later, y'all were jumping through that uh, that Stargate. There's yes, it used to be about four hours old. This area. I don't understand how. Perhaps they were walking incredibly slow. What? <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. I am merely theorizing, speculating. How have we not caught up to them? Well, they did walk towards the DHD. We are following where they have been previously. We're trying to retrace them. They disappeared at the DHD, which is odd. Yeah, there are no tracks. go. If, so there's only tracks going to the DHD, not going away from the DHD. So something chased them from this campsite or chased them to the campsite and they continued running towards the DHD from it. And then something um, happened to them. And something happened. I think if we keep following the tracks, at least maybe we could try and pick up signs of something that was chasing them or scared them enough to keep doing this mad dash to the DHD to dial home. I, not so, if it was flying. They didn't go through the gate? They ran to the DHD and the footprints stopped there. They were just gone. But I mean, uh, so, they, they dialed the, the gate. That's how we heard. Uh, from they them. dialed and they mm -hmm. talked. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you I, do know that... Um, the Phoenix site has a um, a force field similar to the Atlantis where like the iris on Earth. Um, in order to get through, they would have had to put in an IDC code. 
have an idea so you can probably think of. So they went to a different location. Possibly. Possibly. That's going to be there fun. Are, but, there's, yeah. but there's no footprints between the DHD and the gate stairs. There, yeah. They It looks like they didn't make it up to the Stargate. And there was, and there was it, a firefight at the DHD. All tracks stop at the DHD. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Keep so track. Either, Wait, yeah. Keep so track. Either, <laughs> either something zapped them away, something picked them up. Or they got very good at jumping. Or they, I, wait, just, or I, they got vaporized? Is that possible? St- standard yes. SG uh, protocol is when you're dialing, you protect the dialer and make sure the DHD is protected. So mm-hmm. if, if they were trying to get through and trying to commu- uh, communicate, they would have stayed right there. You know, one person dialing, three mm-hmm. you know, firing. Mm-hmm. I say we keep following these tracks and see if we can figure out what was chasing them. It's better, oh, I, mean, I guess. Disintegration would have left scorch marks on the DHD, I think. Let's keep problem. going down the tracks for now. If we don't find anything, maybe we can double back towards the town. Okay. Absolutely. So um, with that uh, survival check that Fiddler and Jake made, you guys are able to pick up the trail at this second little, you know, like little campsite and you continue to head north. It takes um, about another three and a half, almost four hours before something changes. You guys have been walking for a very long time. At this point, the sun has start to set. It is starting to get dark um you see up ahead um the swamp forest begins to thin out the grass not the grass but like the ground gets a little bit more firm um it's not as muddy it doesn't seem to be as waterlogged here you continue on until eventually all of the trees fade away and you are in a very large clearing um glade kind of area what would you like to do well this is different we're running out of daylight guys we need to really look for a place to set up camp for the night somewhere hopefully defensible and somewhat protected well i will recommend against the completely swampy ground for Camping? Yeah, you know, setting up tents, temporary domicile, camping, all that fun stuff. Okay, look, let's go uh, towards the edge of the glade. or It's a glade that we're at, right? Mm-hmm. Let's go towards the edge of the glade, get out of the open, but not in the swamp. Let's start setting up for the night. Cork, would you mind taking a look around the area while we set up and see if there's anything out there that's near this site? Anything you can pick up on the edge? I'll have a look around. There's nothing to worry about. I've spent um, many years uh, watching over the plains. I'll keep Thanks, my Gork. Thank you, Gork. Um, Did we get, this is a question for you, Dan, did we get a check-in time, an expected check-in time? So they would have asked you to check in within 24 hours if possible. Okay. All right. Jake then would be watching. He'd click over to a stopwatch and check his timer to see how long has passed and see how long he's got left and be like, all right, guys, we should probably rest here till light in the morning. Does anybody here know what the mission briefing plan was? What's daylight hours here on this planet? What's the cycle? Oh, Exora <laughs> definitely would have paid attention to that. Um, Absolutely. It's <laughs> very similar to Earth. Um, They have 25 hours in their day as opposed to 24. Mm. Okay. There you go. All right. Well, we'll get a rest in for the night. First light, we will get up and get at it again and get going. Um, we should probably do watches tonight. Rotate who's available. I will watch the night. I I have a ability called Long Night. You ignore right. the, you you ignore the first night without rest, without suffering any ill effects right. until the start. You beast. <laughs> I like it. Or if you're a beast, you're an animal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's Jafar. Get your rest. <laughs> so um, I believe I heard, um, Gork, you were going to check out the surrounding area, the glade a little bit, things like that. Okay. We will get to you in a second. Fiddler, Jake, and Ixora, what are you doing? How are you setting up camp? What precautions might you be taking? 
That's a good I was, I was, question. I was nice. actually going to ask to say, I got to look at my gear and uh, <laughs> read my abilities to figure that out better. So you guys would have um, essentially the standard kit. You have like a um, like a sleeping, you know, like a, a bedroll. Um, you wouldn't necessarily have tents because you're not expecting to be here mm -hmm. for very long. Um, you have rations, so you have water. We're preparing one, right? I believe so. I believe it's preparation one, the okay. standard, because you guys so didn't have... So we have vest and uniforms, MREs, combat knife, personal radios, flashlight, waterproof fire, filtration radiation mask, multi-tool, med kit, climate protection clothing, combat tent, side arms, main arms. Yeah. Uh, you can also have our loadout specialties. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whatever you guys decided those were. And one GDO. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to determine who carries the GDO. Probably um, you. Sure. Yeah, I'll carry it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're we're simple, just fast action kit then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um I mean if we're still setting up the tent for the night and prepping for it. Repairing radius. Okay. Right, what At if Fiddler's point... uh kit is is a camo kit? So he he'll help, you know, he'll disguise our camp as best as possible. Yeah. I have a Absolutely. science kit. That's what I was reading here on these things. So well, I have an engineering things. kit and a camo kit, so okay. sweet. I carry so, all the kits. With the camo the kit. <laughs> yeah. With with the camo kit, you are very familiar with that. No check needed. You are able to um essentially disguise the campsite so you guys um no one like just passing by or anything like that would be able to find you guys. Yeah. It's it's a no fire night kind of thing. Yeah, you just yeah. Yeah, cold it's MREs and quiet. sit in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Exora is just trying to find the driest stretch of ground to put her bedroll on and make sure it's like long enough. Absolutely. Um. So the driest ground would be in the glade out in the open. Mm -hmm. Um. But you do see a couple. There's like a um. It's like a 20 foot stretch between when it's really, really muddy and like the edge of the forest. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of space there. How are the trees here? Are they like, what kind of trees? Are they like bushy trees? Are they like real scraggly, sickly looking things? They're, 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 um, I think like the bayou. Okay. Okay. So, so lots of like Spanish looking moss kind of things. Um, oh, perfect. Not, not a ton of foliage, but um, there is some. Mm -hmm. um, very just, I don't know, tree species. But very, swamp fine. trees. <laughs> yeah, swamp trees. Cool. Yeah, swamp, swamp trees. <laughs> just want to make sure we had like some overhead tree cover. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and if there's like some Spanish moss type stuff, uh, Exora will take that to, to help the, keep the ground underneath all everyone's bedrolls dry. Because you don't want to sleep... Mm -hmm on the spanish moss directly right. but it's a it's right. a decent under uh Padding. layer to keep yeah. your own bedroll dry yeah or it suggests that we sleep as out in the open as possible he grew up in uh the rolling savannas and he he knows uh that area well and can <laughs> be a good sentry if he can see all around him the only catch side of Gork is we gotta be careful because it means everybody can see us. <laughs> so all right. <laughs> I I we might must be, be vigilant. To, you know, I might be able to disguise us a bit, but um I mean I I like having a little bit of extra help from the trees and whatnot. So. I do as well. These are very nice trees. Can we compromise and get on the edge? All right. And this is also up? the first time since you guys have met him that Fiddler actually takes off his sunglasses because now it's dark. It's dark, yeah. He doesn't wear he his can... sunglasses at night. <laughs> no, no, no. He, ta he takes them off when it gets dark because he doesn't need them then. It's very nice. Does he have tan lines? Like, <laughs> yeah, like serious tan lines. lines. <laughs> and, his, and his eyes are kind of, like his eye, like his eyes are kind of almost like a little wider. Like you know mm -hmm. that like his his pupils are, are are really dilated. It's like he you know he's you know it's one of his things that he yeah, yeah. he can see very well at night. Perfect. You wanna Good. you wanna put some camo around that man? You're a little little. Little pale there. Like, what, what, are you, what are you saying? I don't. What? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Then keep so, my eye on you. Gorick, 
You were checking out the surrounding area, the glade. What exactly are you doing while they're setting up camp? Just uh, probably looking for, since this is uh, more like what I'm used to, I'm looking for signs of them and maybe okay. what direction that they have gone Okay. Uh, to get a head start in the morning, pretty much. Absolutely. Do you go into the glade? Oh, yes. Okay. So you um, you guys never really lost the trail on that, that second half of your journey. So you are able to follow it where they, um, it looks like they entered the swamp from this glade. Their footprints go out into the glade. You follow that about um, 50 feet into the glade. You follow their tracks until they make a dead stop. Uh, About 50 feet into the glade. Hmm. You may want to come check this out before bedding down for the night. What you got, Gork? There's, um... It, appear, it appears they appeared here. Appeared? Fascinated. I, I, I'm going to yeah. walk over. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I want to say I was that again. Say, it appears they appeared here. What sort of appearance? Wherever they came from, they were suddenly here. Sam, like work. We're on the way. <laughs> well, I'm interested from a scientific perspective on on how could they just appear here? Do, do I see any sign of ring use? No. Mm-mm. Okay. You're very familiar with that, and you don't see any of that here. You, you just see in front of you. Um, just it's, it looks like, um, like, like whoever was stepping that first person was like mid step and they have just part of a boot print. I want to take, um, like a rock Mm -hmm. and I throw it in that direction. Okay. You throw it in that direction directly past. And as soon as it gets past, like the, the, it doesn't even really get past the footprint. You hear a metallic ting. I think I found something. Um, yes, you should all come here. Uh, oh, I'm already, I'm already yeah. there. It doesn't yeah. take them long. They're yeah. very, very quickly. And I walk, and I don't care away. about this rock that you're throwing. I'm just, I'm going straight. <laughs> straight. Oh, you just, you just, just straight. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, look, Exora's <laughs> new to all this. She yeah, hasn't yeah. paid attention to the danger parts of the mission yeah. briefing Wait, she's read. Don't, don't. So, so you oh. walk and you just kind of. <laughs> You just slam face first into oh. um, an invisible, solid, very cold wall. It Are you all right? I, I, that's yes, why I, I said wait. Uninjured, but this is I'm just thunk, 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 just feel around. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it stone or metal? Uh-oh. Metal. Ooh. Technology. Cool. Right over there. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> what would you I mean, guys like to do? This is how we do? die. <laughs> yeah. yep. I would you like guys... to fondle the invisible object. This is beyond I'm, I'm right there with her. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, um, Team fondling. <laughs> you guys can make either um, uh, so either a science check or an mm-hmm. investigation check. Whichever you prefer. They're the same for me, but I'll use, I'll use science. <sighs> Back to the single digits. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, damn no. it. Oh, no. <laughs> just feeling for Hold anything on. interesting. I I could just go over to Jake and say, I think they've been infected with something. <laughs> I'm starting to think of that too. <laughs> so uh, there's definitely oh. something here. I can't tell what it is. Yes, yes. So what I can tell you guys with those rolls. Um with those rolls. <laughs> this is a you guys kind of, you know, you feel around, you move to like the left and right. This is a um very large object. You can't feel the top of it from like the extent of your reach, and you follow it basically to um if you would like, you can follow it basically to the edge of the um of the glade until there is a like a curved corner and it starts to 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 okay. curve it, it kind of follows the shape of the glade it's like a big circle okay um, interesting 
it, 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 you guys can go, if you would like, you can essentially walk around the whole thing. Yes. Um, and Looking for mm-hmm. any indents. Going to opposite choose. directions. Yes. Yeah. Opposite each directions. Other on the back guys, side. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a high guys... reach. I'm going high. You're going low. I know. I'm, yeah. I'm going low. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, who was going low? Okay. So. The short guy. You, the short guy. So you go. Guy. You um you start on your side. You go all the way around, all the way around. You get back to the front, essentially where like the footprints are, and you feel just the slightest indent, um, at about like waist height. Hmm. I think I got something here. Hmm. Gorik, I may require a boost. I cannot determine where the top of this invisible object is. All right, I just look her. <laughs> 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 easy peasy she's she's a she's a bean pole so it's not hard like just uh you don't feel the top of it i still cannot feel the top this must be a very tall object uh, I, I, when you're done hey, come over here I, I, there is there's a there's an indentation right here where the feet uh, right i can't I, I can't find the edge thank you mm. Gorek. No. okay <laughs> So you guys have found an indentation at about, like I said, about waist height. My waist height or her waist height? <laughs> Normal human that's waist a, height. That's a, a Jake's that's waist a variance. Height. Yeah, 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 Jake. Jake Jake's height. Oh, height. Jake's yeah, yeah. height. All right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, right here. <laughs> Come here, average human. We need you over here. <laughs> all right, all right. So why would you guys try and walk do? through. Just, just right here. Just kind right. of put your hands out and push forward. Push. Perhaps it is a pull if it does not a push. Oh, I didn't think of that. Jake tries walking through. Push, Hand pull, out. twist, turn. Okay. How do you try walking through? Tell me what you do. Hand out in front of him first, reaching to hit it to see if there's anything. Okay. If he's got nothing, he's just going to kind of slowly walk forward with his hand out. Yeah, so you um you reach your hand out and you do feel this indentation. It's kind of like... um. Like a seam that's not fully together, if that makes sense. Like there's mm-hmm. there's a gap that you can just kind of like, it just kind of curves in a little bit. Kind of like how this whole thing is rounded. It just kind of curves in. Um, you are able to get your hand in there and you can feel a little bit of wiggle, but you don't go through. It doesn't open. Nothing. Uh, Pop it. Pull it. Supposed to be able to go through this guy as he starts wiggling his hand around in it and tries to grab at it. I'm thinking it might be a door. Yeah, no door. Feels like wall. But I mean, a door is a wall until it opens. Yeah, it's essentially like a crevice that you have your hand in, and you can try to feel slide it around for something. He's trying to see if there's anything to grab or feel or touch or boop. You don't you don't feel it's it's on both sides so it's like a crevice that your hand is Mm -hmm. in on both sides. It's very smooth very um, just that same cold metal. You can just feel very slightly like when you move your hand to the left or right you can just feel the slightest amount of wiggle. He's going to try and push. Yeah. Like like, like a sliding door. Ah. Yeah, like pulling like a sliding glass door. Absolutely. Please roll me a strength check. Strength. We use the 4 Strength check. 20. 20. Okay. You struggle with this door. It does not want to open. It's got that little bit of wiggle, but it just, it doesn't want to budge. Okay. There's something after, here. Yeah. After a couple of seconds of just kind of like just straight brute forcing it you're able to get it open enough that you have some leverage where you can kind of like shoulder in and start like shoving it all the way open and then eventually once you get it about halfway it does you hear like this hiss and then it slides all the way open we just like manhandled the elevator door to this spaceship we're like Mm -hmm. get open basically (laughs) basically um before you you see a um um it's a gold very... with a zat leveled at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the the very first thing you notice is that, is that there are muddy footprints on a very um, clean, sterile, metallic floor. There is stretching before you just a very sterile, clean, 
hallway. Is there lights? It is lit. Mm -hmm. Not super bright, but enough that you guys don't have to, you know, like put lights on or anything. Well, we just found a ship. Oh, um, fascinating. Okay. Are you sure it's a ship, or do you think it's just like a base or something? Could be. An outpost. Found something. Let's uh, go cautiously. And as quietly. soon as the word go exits your mouth, Exora is in. Cautiously okay. and quietly. <laughs> so, <laughs> in right waiting for stealthy. permission. <laughs> Please go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> as as Exora steps into this That's it. narrow We're gonna hallway, get shot. Yeah. <laughs> please roll initiative. This will be a surprise round on you guys. Okay. Certainly. Um, but I have, an, I have advantage, so it mine's a twelve. Perfect. Okay. Uh, oh, I need to put up. Okay. So I we, don't. We don't need tokens to click on, do we? Um, I don't do this wow. often. Because... How? Do you I click it up? the little um, left hand side near the bottom, like bottom middle. It'll say like initiative tracker. Um, okay, okay. Um, like a clock, I think. Yes. Okay. There we go. Clear list. Okay. It should be good to go now. I should be able to add y'all stuff, right? So I'm gonna try to help you out with. Okay. Gorik, I see you there, Gorik. How did you do that? I just dragged my token out, clicked it, and rolled initiative, and then I changed it to what I rolled the first time. I tried that. It's not like I can drag, but nothing's coming out. It's you gotta, you gotta drag, not the picture, the name. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm clicking and dragging. Nothing is dropping in. Mm -hmm. I can see it dragging with my mouse, and then I let go, and it. You'll try dragging the picture instead of the name, then maybe. It might be the picture he's using. Nope. I tried picture and name. Nothing. Okay, I can just add you if in. If you Let's, give me yeah. a blank one, I will do it. Yeah. <laughs> Miller. Uh, I just viewed. Add. There we go. Okay, what hey. was your initiative? Uh, 16? Yes, 16. 16. Yes. Okay, there we go. Thanks. Okay, and then we also have Fiddler. 12. 12, okay. Maybe with advantage, I still roll single digits. And then we also have the one and two. Okay, so they roll as well. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. We're dead. So, <laughs> Okay. The second one is a 10. Okay. So they are spaced out. Good. Okay. Now, how do I make it uh, descending? There we go. Okay. So they do have a surprise round. So they are going to go ahead and shoot first. That's Sora. fair. Yeah. That that makes total sense. I, you and know, you, you are that person. I am. I am that person. Look, I'm the person with no armor class <laughs> or combat skills oh. should always go first. Okay. Uh, so does a 16 hit you? Yes. Okay. So you are going to take lots of damage. Five piercing damage as okay. a um you see as your foot steps onto this metallic floor you see from the ceiling these two very thin very sleek um turrets these guns descend from the ceiling and they start to fire um so you'll take five piercing damage for that the second one uh who was right behind Ixora? Uh, Fiddler, Fiddler was trying to stealth and go in behind her. Okay, so it will shoot at the next closest target, which would be Fiddler. Uh, does a 15 hit you, Fiddler? No. Okay, so um, a bullet just kind of like whizzes straight past you. And you Is it a bullet or a beam? It's a beam. So okay. it, it, it's a... Um, it's not like a laser beam. It's like a very... Kind of looks like a needle, but it glows slightly. If that makes sense. Okay. Alrighty. So that would be the surprise round. 
Uh, so turret one is going to fire at Ixora again. That's fair. Well, I'm yes. assuming in Nate. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, you'll take Look, Ixora three... has to learn a lesson early on in the yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> you'll take three piercing damage. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say that these turrets are, like I said, they are in the ceiling. It's about a 15-foot ceiling, and they are about um like 20 feet back from this door. And it is your turn, Ixora. Uh get the fuck out and back up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so essentially, um, the there's this hallway, and then you've got yeah. the open glade, and you can like duck to the side or just, do uh, right yeah. to the side. Just ah, oh, this is not good. And I just turn around and I walk back out. This okay. is not good. Like blood on my hand. Nice. I like it. Any actions? Anything? Um, um, that was that was <laughs> your movement. My movement. Yeah, and um, not even all of your movement. That would probably would have been like <laughs> one meter of movement. Okay, sure, sure. I get six meters of movement. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just making sure I'm nice and out of the way. And yes. I will look at uh, Jake Miller and go, there appear to be rather hostile turrets that have emerged out of the ceiling of this location. I would recommend not getting shot. It is quite unpleasant. Nice. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Jake, it is your turn. I'd be <laughs> hopefully coming in and I mean, I'm assuming I'd be seeing this shooting happening. Do I see something to shoot at? Oh, you can see it. Yeah, you guys are all kind of like standing in this doorway. You guys all watched as these right, turrets came out of the ceiling. All right, move to cover and shoot then. So absolutely go like ahead. Like D&D move action. And yeah, so you shooting. have you have a move, you have an action and you have a bonus action. Um, so go ahead and roll an attack on turret one or turret two. I guess turret one. Turret one. Okay, go ahead and roll attack. I'm going to be oh. right back. I have to grab a water. That's fine. I think I may have to add in the P90 because I realized I added in the Beretta, but I didn't add in the P90. So do oh, that. no. Well, you got to have, uh, you no. you you gotta have, have the P90. I gotta yeah. have the P90. Mm -hmm. I, what do you guys remember? What page had the stats for the? Oh, farms? all the weapons are on page. I was just looking at them. Uh, that's gear, weapons, armory. It's just considered a long, long arm. Yeah. Yes. So it's on page sixty-seven. Yes, yeah, sounds right. Yeah, because the armor's right okay. after that. Yeah. Two D six. Okay, let me add that in. Two D six damage. Piercing. Jeez, what was the range on the long run? Uh, two hundred 200 meters slash eighteen. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, you can definitely hit it. Not well if you can roll, you can reach it essentially. Yeah. Cat reload says thirty, which is interesting. Okay, all right. P ninety. See, that's. Just to clarify, though, you actually roll the dice that's left of that for the attack. Roll to hit, and then do I click separate for damage, or is it going to auto roll if I hit? Um, I'm I not don't... sure. I don't think we've actually well, rolled attacks. Then. Yeah, we haven't. Okay, we... so yeah, it does. It automatically does it. So I guess okay. eleven to hit. Okay. And six uh, damage. Let's see. Okay, so it does not quite hit. So you fire off your shot, and it just barely misses that that turret that you were um shooting at okay. any other actions anything else you would like to do um bonus action remember your training remember your training <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. okay then in that case it is fiddler's turn okay uh fiddler is going to look for any like signs of control panel targeting system anything like that that stands out i know where the turrets are what else is yes. in here absolutely so go ahead and roll me a um perception or investigation check whichever you prefer 20 20 perfect about 10 feet into this hallway on the right hand side you side you do see a panel of some sort it's not open you don't know if it will control these turrets or maybe the door you're not sure but there is a panel there if you would like to go in and check it out okay i will i will look up at jake and go keep him busy and i run right in and go to the panel 
Perfect. I love it. You reach the panel easy enough. Um, it's just a, like you push in and it pops open kind of thing. Okay. And you see, um, roll me, let's see, would you know, roll me a history check. History? Yes, please. Okay. Where? It, um, I don't there, have history. Oh, is, there, is there not a history roll? Okay. Um, then, How about engineering? Uh, well, I, I default to engineering. Uh, there's a science um, and then there's engineering. I think either one of those would. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, culture. Go ahead and roll me a culture. Culture. No, well, well, hold on, hold on. Because it's. Yeah. Okay. I'll say engineering. That's fine because you're dealing with electronics. What? Absolutely. 15. That's fine. 15. Okay. Um, This is, you're familiar with the, like this um, stuff. This is ancient. This is ancient technology. You're familiar with this. You know, okay. um, you're not, again, you're not completely sure what this controls because ancients aren't really known for putting labels on their <laughs> control panels. Um, but if you would like, you can start messing with stuff of course Fiddler, okay yeah th that's not even a question fiddler starts fiddling okay i love it so i have a question for you okay what you see before you is um like a typical panel in um essentially any of the episodes where you have for ancients you have it's like like little like glass like slates mm -hmm. you see a row of five on top a staggered so they're kind of like um in between the the five mm -hmm. row of four and then you see a row of three separate on the bottom they are not connected with they're not like staggered in between the, okay. the two first rows what do you mess with the three staggered on the bottom okay how do you mess with them uh i start pulling the crystals out just perfect do, 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 just yanking I love it. Roll me a dexterity saving throw, please. Perfect. Dexterity saving throw. 24. 24. Okay. Yes. So you yank the first one out. Um, there's like a little spark, but nothing happens. You yank the second one out. Um, you hear like this whirring sound. And then you yank the third one out. And you hear um, up because you're 10 feet in. And those turrets are about 10 feet away from you. You hear... Um, this like high pitched whirring noise and you look up and you see the um both of the turrets actually start kind of going haywire they're all over the place and then they turn to each other they shoot and they both explode you seem to have tripped the failsafe on these so congratulations you guys are out of combat uh, yay ears, ears ringing a little bit Oops. everybody okay I, I didn't mean to blow him up like that. I, I can fix it. That I can fix you? it. What? That was you? Thanks, I, my ears are hurt. It's a little loud in here with the explosions what? and the shooting. And the, what? You got to speak louder. I can't hear you. <laughs> We're safe. <laughs> For now. All right. So you guys have defeated the turrets. There does not seem to be, excuse me, any danger at this point. What would you like to do? Proceed forward with extreme caution. <laughs> I put okay. all three back in place. Okay. I, I'm not sure if these do anything else in the ship. I don't want... Let's just... Fiddler, don't <laughs> trip anything else. Please. Yeah, you, it, you put them back and... and it's you literally hear, my job. You hear like <laughs> um, like a clanking, like the turrets are trying to do something, Good. but nothing happens. So. Mm. Is everybody okay? I will Zora, live. Gork. I... Hey, 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 Ixie got uh, <laughs> got the brunt of it. You all right? You take care of your wounds. There's like blood coming out of her shoulder, out of your shoulder and like yeah. out of her like like where like her like oh, hippie God. would be. Ixie, <laughs> she's she's almost that. at at like half health, um, oh, just no. above half health. Oh Lord, <laughs> uh, Jake's, Jake's... I, I, I'm going to do some first aid. I was going to say, Absolutely. Jake's going to help with some first aid on that. No, you're just leaking fluids uh, everywhere. All right, you guys look after her. I'm going to scout ahead. Really, don't go too far. I, I Look, I'm, I'm don't on the radio. Up. <laughs> and I will stealth, and I will slowly begin. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll it. 21. Or if Perfect. You're doing, if you're doing the first aid, I'm helping you. <laughs> yep. I pat I pat Ixie on the, on the leg as I go by quietly. 
You're too fine. You're very brave. So um, do you guys have, I know you have first aid kits. I'm assuming, yeah. um, does it heal those? That's question? a great question. Um, Nugget man. I'm just looking at all the gear. gear I was gear, just reading gear. that damage. <laughs> uh, let's let's see. see, Towery. Not upgrades, not armor. Towery gear. Uh, C4 camo. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm guessing M, M or M or medical, maybe. Med kit, personal. Um, maybe oh. used once as a med kit. There. What's is a med kit? Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> Let's look. I mean, that's. All right, I'm scrolling too to find it. Yeah. Okay, a character can use a med kit to heal 1d8 damage to a wounded oh. character or 1d4 oh. damage to a scuffed character during a short oh. rest. Am I scuffed or wounded? A, you a you would... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was Go. just going to say, you would be scuffed because you are um, above half health. Okay. A, prof a proficient character, however, d heals 2d8 to a wounded character and 2d4 to a scuffed ah. character. Oh, nice. You can only benefit from a med kit once per short rest. A fully stocked med kit, this is a note, a fully stocked med kit is designed to have more supplies than typically required on a single mission. For longer missions, you would need to have additional med kits issued. Okay. Unless otherwise noted by the GM, a med kit does not need to track a limited number of uses. On protracted deployments, the GM may rule that a med kit has reduced healing effect once its resources have been taxed by dire circumstances. Perfect. Okay. And the, ah, uh, oh, I didn't see this. There's a personal med kit. It is the personal version of the med kit. It is smaller and contains less supplies, and it is used once as a med kit, then it is expended. Okay. So apparently there's two different kinds of med kits. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. So I would say, um, unless it says in, um, cause I think the loadouts has just a personal med kit in it, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So then it would be a one use, um, you could do since you're yeah, scuffed I'll put it in the chat, Here um, go. Whoever's doing it, if you're proficient, you can do the 2d4 for a scuffed character. If you're not proficient, it'd be the 1d6 for a scuffed character. Or excuse me, 1d4 mm -hmm. for a scuffed character. I'm totally using the wrong supplies. I'm not proficient. Okay. <laughs> so then just 1d4 healing. The well, well, band-aid on us solve well, this. If, if, if I'm helping <laughs> heal, is that like an assist? Maybe get more healing? Yeah. Um, it makes you roll better. No, okay. No, yeah, I tried. I don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't think. I don't think you can. There's well, nothing to roll advantage for. So I may be using a band aid, but I'm really it, good. You know, it's gonna soak up some of the blood. I'm gonna drip less on the floor. I'll um, I'll say I'll say since Jake is helping, you can get a plus one to whatever you roll. Yeah. All right. Do you want to roll one d four plus one, Gort? Because you're you're medicining me up. I'll do that. Oof. Two. I'll take it. I I'm really good at medicine. <laughs> You're like have a band aid. Slap. Yeah. I'm like oh. You'll survive. You. He's like rubbing I dirt shall. on it, like some, <laughs> some some grass. It's just a band aid. He carefully peels off <laughs> each side and smacks it on the two holes. No, I like to imagine he he takes his time placing it. Oh yeah. Perfectly. <laughs> yes. Two band aids have been used <laughs> from our med kit. I love it. I love one it. One for the entrance wound and one for the exit wound. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay, so Fiddler, you yes. are sneaking ahead. I am sneaking. What you see, you are pretty confident that, you know, nobody's gonna gonna stumble across you. Nobody's gonna nobody can see you if they stumble across you. There we go. Um you Follow this hallway. It curves, it twists, it turns, but it doesn't branch off. Um, is, it, is there an elevation or like change at all? Very slight, but nothing like okay. major. Um, it seems to be very gradual. Um, you go for a while and you start to hear in the distance um, some screams. 
screams yeah screams um you hear um like some um it sounds like somebody's in pain and quite a bit of it (laughs) okay at this point i will very quietly report back to uh mr miller Mm -hmm. i uh uh jake come in hey yeah fiddler go ahead we we almost Uh, got to advantage up i i I, i'm i'm hearing screams like Screams. someone in someone in severe pain. All right, investigate cautiously. We're coming up behind you now, and this okay. is when Jake would get everybody to get together. Like we need to go if you're able. Let's go. And I'll I've move got, forward. I've got my band aids. I've got my rifle slung. I have my Beretta out. Okay, so um, Jake, Gork, and Exora, it will take you guys. Um, I'm gonna say about five, maybe ten minutes to catch up to Fiddler. Um, are you guys trying to go stealthily or are you going with haste? Uh, what do you guys think? Someone scream at it. I was going to say probably with some haste, not like okay. mad dashing it, but we're definitely moving with a purpose. Moving quickly. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. then in that case, it'll take you about five, six minutes to get to Fiddler. Um, Fiddler, you are cautiously moving forward. Yes. Okay. Stealthily moving forward stealthily moving forward so you are moving through this um this hallway and you are at a point where it's curving right and it you notice that it is a slightly sharper incline it's it's noticeable now um you follow it around and you see a brighter light coming from around the corner the um noises have gotten a little bit louder it sounds Mm -hmm. like you are definitely closer to whatever is happening um would what would you like to do would you like to keep going forward step into the cast light what you gonna do? um okay does it look like i can't look around the corner without getting into the light correct because okay. it's it's like sloped and curved okay i i will put my sunglasses back on mm-hmm. uh or flip them down click and and i will i will try and get like a glance um if if i can it would be it would be like um it'd be like fifth element when he's going to negotiate he like looks to see how many of the, the, the it's like <laughs> final left yeah. two on the right yeah you know, that kind of thing just kind of glance look pull back just wants to see what he can see absolutely roll me a perception check please all right 15 15 okay so with that you can see um because of the way it's sloped and because of the curve you don't it's you can't see a lot but you do see a big um it, it looks to open up into a big like um white walled chamber you are able to very quickly glance that you see there are maybe like five or six human sized glass maybe tubes in the center of the room um and then you see across all the way on the opposite side of the room um you see what seems to be a group of people um you can't really tell what they're doing but you do see that there appears to be people over there okay a a group of people yes a group of people all right no identical identifying markings on them or anything Nothing with the distance that they're at and with the slope of this this incline. Okay. And nothing you can determine from where you're at right now. Okay. And with a quick glance. And and I I mean this group, would it be less than three or less, four or more? It is more. It looks to be more than four people. Okay. All right. At that point, and the screaming is still going on? Yep. Okay, does it look like it's coming from the group of people or it's coming from someone within the group of people? It sounds like it's it's it sounds like one person. Um okay. it doesn't sound like the whole group. Okay. Uh at that point I will back back around the corner out of the light. Mm-hmm. Um and I will just send a quick message. Uh my multiple contacts, uh four, five, six, can't tell from here. Large room, wide open. Uh, still lots of screaming. Should I engage or should I wait? Hold for now. We're coming up behind you. All right. So I put my pistol down. I pull out my long rifle and I start getting it ready. Okay, absolutely. It's it's a little disconcerting um, just kind of sitting here and listening to this person scream. Um, mm-hmm. And and it, it it's like, it's agony. It is painful, whatever this person is going through. Um, 
you wait a couple minutes and eventually um, Miller, Gorick, and Ixora do come up and meet you. Now, let me ask, do you guys start stealthing at any point or do you just kind of do your brisk walk up? I mean, as we're getting closer to the screaming... You guys can I'd, definitely hear it. I would keep the pace going till I can see Fiddler, then slow down at Fiddler, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah, absolutely. You guys meet up. That's what I would do. <laughs> and okay. just kind of like point around the corner, you know, and just like shrug. I walk in. <laughs> okay. Or so I follow. So Fid- <laughs> Jake, Damn it. Jake stops at Fiddler and you know starts to talk and have quite you know questions to the we're, we're strateg- strategizing yeah and as you guys are as you guys are talking to each other just out of the corner of your eye you see Gorik and Ixora walk past you <laughs> curve around up and step into this room um so I learned my lesson yet Come not on, yet Twitter. apparently <laughs> <laughs> well, I let Gorik go first that is a lesson I've learned yes yes perfect okay so as you two step in you see so a for the screen um yeah yeah it, the, it's it's bad. Um, you see a, essentially this is a laboratory. You see six cylindrical human sized tubes, four of which seem to be filled. Um, you can go ahead and make me a perception check real quick to see Certainly. what might be filled in them. Um, across the room, at the far end, you see, uh, while you guys are making those checks, you see, um, it's kind of disturbing. So on a high operation table is a face down person. Um, standing above them is a hooded figure. You see along this person's, uh, the person on the table, you see a, um, they seem to have an open wound from the base of their skull to about in between their shoulder blades. Inside that wound are metallic prongs and arms and and like some kind of device that is holding that wound open. Kind of halfway inside of that wound is um, what you would all recognize as a Gua'uld symbiote. Oh. The screams that you're hearing are both from the person on the ground and the shrieks of this symbiote. Um, they both seem to be in extreme pain. You're not sure exactly what is happening, what's going on, but the hooded figure seems to be manipulating those metallic like tongs and prongs. And they seem to like, they'll reach out and like, kind of like push or tug on the Gua'uld. They seem to, you, you have no idea what they're doing. This is not something that you guys have ever seen before. Um, what were those perception checks? 14 and 18. I got Perfect. 14. Gork got 18. Perfect. So with both of you guys, you can tell um, inside those four cylindrical tubes, it seems to be some kind of, or six cylindrical, four of which are filled. They are all filled with some type of like bluish green liquid that seems to be bubbling. And the far four containers are um, four humanoid figures. They there is a um, large blonde curly haired um, male looking figure. There is a um, tall dark skinned woman looking figure, a medium height Hispanic looking woman, um, as well as a medium height um, Caucasian looking woman as well in those four tubes. As you guys are looking at them, you do notice that they are wearing the uniform uniform of Stargate Phoenix, and they do have the GP Phoenix tassels on their shoulders. Um, as you guys walk in, just kind of brazenly, um, <laughs> you you see yeah. this scene, and and you also take stock that there are four Jaffa flanking oh. on either sides of this. Um, this high table where this hooded figure is doing their work. They turn at the sound of your, of your, your entering. They look at each other, look to the hooded figure, and then they lift their weapons and they prepare to fire. (laughs) Why have you imprisoned our people? 
Roll initiative, please. Oh boy. This is the episode that Ixora dies. Da, 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 da. Okay, let me before you guys. Yeah, they oh, gotta. Okay, so then Rolled let me. Much yeah. worse than last time. We'll change that to. Oh, much yeah. worse. <laughs> Riddler's is actually a seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Yeah. So seventeen. Are you not gonna clear it? Mm-hmm. You can just change it typically. Yeah, I'm just changing it just because it's a little bit easier. Oh, I actually rolled it up, so he's on there now. I nice. can change it. Oh, okay. Uh I used my token. Woohoo. So then how do I take one off? How do I delete Just hit one? just hover over it and click the trash can. That? Oh, there's the trash can. Okay, cool. Um, so Gorik a twenty-two. Uh, Jake was an eight. It looks like Fiddler is a seventeen. Um, so then we're gonna do one D twenty plus two. So a four for group one of the Jaffa. We'll just do. Oh, I don't like that group one. One. <laughs> and then we will do 1d20. Oh my gosh, one, one of them one. goes after me. I'm a shocked. 15 for group. Oh, what did I do? Okay, 15 for group two. Oh, that should be a four. There we go. And then we will do descending order. And I think that's everything, so... Okay, so Gorik, you are up first. What would you like to do? I want to rush forward and um, attempt to uh, disable what I assume is a gold operating. Okay, absolutely. So they are, um, this is a very large room and they are, um, since our speed is in meters, uh, they, okay, hold on. I gotta do some math real quick. Just divide by three and that's how many feet. Three, right. Um, or multiply by three. So. Okay. Okay. So they're about. 55 feet away from you at this time. So you can't quite make it there. Um, If you would like to dash, you are able to as well. Well, yes. Okay. So you are able to dash and you do. um, I'm just kind of, we'll say you make it because math, I'm not good at it. (laughs) I'm also uh, fast. Okay. Okay. So then, yeah. So with your dash, you are able to make it there. You are now at the, um, uh, the, the operating table, the hooded figure is, um, right on the side, but then you do also have four Jaffa, um, right up in your face as well. So I'm attempting to threaten what I'm assuming these Jaffa are trying to protect. Okay. Hopefully, uh, you know, like prevent them from shooting, but you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, go ahead and roll me um, an intimidation check, please. All right. right. Not my best check. Not bad. Not bad. 14's not bad. 14? Okay. Um, they seem a little like they're a little put off by the fact that you just kind of rushed for Jaffa that have their 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 weapons at your face you you know trailed on you um but they're not backing down any bonus actions anything that you would like to do because that would be your movement and your action to dash this action dodge maybe only I think only scouts can do that. I am a scout. Oh, you are a scout. Okay, so mm-hmm. then yeah. um yeah, you should be able to bonus action dodge. Let me double check real quick. Hold on. <laughs> We're um, learning to play our classes. Okay, engineer. Medic. Scientist. That's me. Scouts right after me. Yes, scouts. Okay. 
Um, okay, so at level one, you have the survivalist and the field hack feature. Okay, so it looks like you do not have not having a bug to do that yet. All right. Yeah, yeah. Not at this time, it looks like. I'm not sure what bonus actions I could perform at this point. So I think I will just uh, pass turn. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Um. So then next up we have is Fiddler. Okay. Um. I will move into the middle of the hallway where I get a, a straight shot through. Um. Mm -hmm. I'll take aim on the guy in the hood. Okay. At the hood. Okay. And I'll try and uh, hit him with my, my long rifle. Absolutely. Nah, that's an 11. An Why 11. Why rolling so terrible? So you fire off your shot and it goes a little wide. It doesn't quite get close to the hooded figure that you see before you. Anything else? Any other nope. actions? Nope. I, I will duck back into the hallway. Okay. Absolutely. Um, It is now group two's turn, including the hooded figure. They are going to, let me just grab that. So the hooded figure, you see them turn. Um, Gork, you see just, uh, just black. There's no, it's just a void where the face should be. Um, you see they turn in your general direction. Um, they kind of pause for a moment. They reach out put their hand around the symbiote and like crush it. They, Ooh. they kill it essentially. Um, and then they are going to roll a check here. It's a little scary. Well, okay. That is just enough. Um, they disappear. <gasps> you do not see them anymore. They crush that symbiote and then they seem to be gone. The two Jaffa that were directly to the side of this hooded figure are going to take their actions. The first one that is closest to you, Gorik, is going to make a melee attack against you. And that is a plus two. Uh, does a 14 hit you? 20. Okay, so that does not hit. So they um, they take the butt of their staff and they try to like hit you in the face with it and you just kind of like duck to the side. Um, the second one, the one that is behind... Your skills yeah. are lacking, Jafar. It, they just kind of... <laughs> they don't seem to respond. Um, as they turn to you, though, you do see the symbol on their um, forehead for their their Goa'uld um, allegiance, essentially. You do not recognize the symbol. Ooh. It is not one you have come across. Um, the one that is directly behind the one that attacked you, Gorik, is going to raise his staff and attempt to shoot um at Ixora because she is still in the doorway. I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to look at a Jaffa. Just please stop getting shot. We can talk to her about <laughs> positioning in battle. She hasn't learned yet. She's learning about cover. Yes. We're, we're, As we're we learning speak. Each other too. <laughs> okay, these are Calry weapons. I want the staff weapon, the Jaffa. Yeah, I thought um, I had everything written down, but apparently I don't. Okay, they so... They are on page... They're after all the basic equipment, which is kind of silly. It's on page 77 of the book. I don't know why I'm telling you this, <laughs> but uh, that's where they are. And I believe that is the... It's not the blade... The we'll say melee yeah. the, the back of the, the if it's a melee staff or no with the plasma blast that's what it would be yeah so mm, that mm. yeah we're gonna <laughs> we're, we're gonna no. say they they have that <laughs> okay 
You can, that's... you can, you can shoot me with a staff weapon. I have killed no. you three times in two different <laughs> games. You can kill me in session one of I'm not going to kill you in the first episode, no. Um, so he's going to roll an attack with It's your vengeance. It's okay. That. <laughs> with uh, that? And or with, with that? With that. <laughs> It'll just be a flat roll. Does, uh, I'm assuming a four does not hit a you. A four does not hit me. Okay, so you see um, the Jaffa that is behind the one that swung at Gorik. He lifts his zat. It kind of like it, it like flares up like they do when they're about to fire. It does go off, but it goes wide and it hits the wall behind you, Ixora. Cool. Uh, I am alarmed. Right. Yes, reasonably so. Um, next up we have is Jake Miller. Okay. Um, so I was behind the group, mm-hmm. so I'm going to use my movement to get up to the doorway or inside, just inside the door if I can. Yeah, you can get, you can get inside the door with your, with your movement. Cause Fiddler was able to get up, shoot and go back. So, okay. I'm going to do that and I'm going to activate my tactic, which is defensive posture. Okay. Absolutely. So for two rounds, any team member within two meters of me adds plus two AC. Perfect. Okay, so that would be um, Ixora is definitely within two meters of you. Fiddler would be within two meters of you if he moved into the room. Okay. Um, the the only thing I couldn't, I was, I'm still trying to read all this. I was busy trying to read how it works. Does that count as an action, or is it a bonus action? Um, is it is it a class ability? Yes. Um, okay. So let me see. the soldier does. I'm trying to scroll back up, but my PDF is lagging. Yeah. No. No worries. I can. I've got it right here. I can take a look. Um. And you said that is the defensive posture. Yeah. I'm trying to scroll down right now to my class. Tactical flexibility. Soldier. There we go. Okay. So it's mm. not in the soldier. So it must be a feat. Oh, it's one of your have. tactical feats. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a tactic feat. So it's not a base soldier thing. Um. Okay. So defensive that... posture. No, it's just something you have. I think add plus two AC to other to team members within two meters of you. Yeah, but it, does it count as an action or is it a free action? I think it's action? just something you get. Um, I think unless it states otherwise, mm-hmm. it's just a like a static effect. This ones will say once per encounter or when you hit or I think it's it's just when you are within your teammates of two meters, they get this happens. Yeah. Okay. That's well, what, then uh, that's what we'll rule it as. Okay. All right. Well, then for that, then it's active. You guys are good on that. <laughs> Perfect. Um, interesting. It says as an action, you may activate a feat you don't know. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. So that's making more sense. Okay. That's another ability that you can't use again until you take a long rest. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, then barring that, I'm going to just shoot one of these dudes that's coming out absolutely that. so are you shooping sh- shooping. <laughs> shooping. Are you, shooping are you shooting at any of the ones that have already gone or the ones who have not gone ones who've already gone shoot, okay shoot these meanies that are shooting at us pew 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 pew, pew. absolutely go ahead and roll to hit okay p90 13 to hit with uh, two damage come on jake let me just confirm because again i thought i had all this written down but apparently i don't um. Nope, that would be under soldiers. Scientist. Hold on one second. Sorry, guys. Totally fine. Yeah, you're good. I'm Our still first doing a lot of session reading, with this system. So. I'm still trying to learn all of this. Okay, so they are a. Okay. Yes, that does hit. So they will take two damage. Go, mm-hmm. oh, and they have a total of how much health? Oh, Jesus Christ, I lost it. Come on. There we go. Okay. Okay. He looks a bit hurt. It looks like that shot with uh what what weapon did you use? Did you use the um P90? P90, yes. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, Did a burst. you Yeah, you shoot off a burst and um several of the bullets just slam into his shoulder that's holding the zat. Um and he's actually going to roll a 
20 plus one. Okay, he drops his gun. Oh. All right, cool. You, first, yeah, you hit him. Good wounding. Yeah, you hit him in his firing arm and he drops it. And that was the one that was behind the one that hit Gorik because the one that hits Gorik has just a regular melee staff. Um, anything else on your turn? I think that's it. Alrighty, then in that case, Ixora, it is your turn. It's me. Ah, uh, is there cover in this room? So, um, you could move behind one of the big uh, cylinders, and that would give you some cover. That would give you, um, honestly, that would give you three quarters cover. I'll do that. I will move in behind one of the cylinders. Okay. Perfect. So one of the unoccupied case... ones. Good, good. Okay, so then in that case, you have a plus five to your AC. Sweet, I'll take it. Alrighty. Any action? Any bonus Um, action? That dude disappeared, and that was not, like, cool. Mm -hmm. um, these are not Exora's words, they're mine. Um, <laughs> and so I'm going to spend a Eureka point. I get one whenever I fail a wisdom or intelligence check, which I have definitely done with a now one at least once this game um and i can it's it's my archaeologist feat since i'm just behind here and that guy disappeared i automatically locate any secret chambers or otherwise hidden rooms within a structure no larger than 20 meters square uh, uh, per proficiency bonus. so like 40 square meters proficiency okay. bonus yeah um, i i don't know how to get into it i just know if it exists so i'm like behind this tube and i'm looking to see if maybe there's a secret room he went to or something Yes, so um, with that Eureka point, you do notice as you're kind of got like um, you're you're ducked behind this yep. <laughs> um, this cylinder. You see off to your left. So on the when you enter on the left side of the room, mm -hmm. not anywhere close to where the guy was or okay. the the figure was, you do um, just get that like instinctual ping that there's something there the architecture that... is slightly wrong for the shape yeah of there's yeah, yeah. something's not quite right over there okay but that's... it's it's not anywhere close to where the hood that's it for was. me because exora doesn't want to have to shoot people unless absolutely necessary absolutely okay good good so then we have the next to jaffa um the one with the regular staff is gonna move around um, kind of slip behind Gork so he can get a shot off at Jake. That's going to be 1d20 plus 2. Jake, does a 12 hit you? It does not. Okay, so he kind of does the same thing that the first one did. He lifts his staff up just trying to like bop you in the head or face to kind of like knock you out. And you just, you kind of see him coming from your peripheral and you're able to to duck to the side. Misty cuffs. Yes. The one behind him with the Zat sees Gorik, and he's going to make a shot at Gorik. Let's see here. Did he not drop that? Or yeah, that was the group so, one. There's two groups. Yeah, yeah. so there's two groups. There's four total. Um, the front two have stabs, and the back two have Zats. Uh, the one on um, the essentially like the right side of the room has dropped his Zat. This is the one on the left. So it's going to be 1d20 plus... Uh, what is there to hit? Dex 2. Okay. I'm assuming 11 does not hit you because you said it's like a 20, right? <laughs> okay, so... You are, you've got, you know, basically like these two staff guys kind of in your area and you see at the corner of your eye, you see this other guy raises that and fire at you and you're able to just kind of like duck down and, and it goes wide over your head. And with that, it is your turn. All right. Um, hmm. Well, yep. Time to turn deadly. All right. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna uh fire uh my Mossberg at um the guy in front of me. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Boom. Oh I think it's a miss. No. Yes, that would be now is that is that an, a moss okay, what is a moss? It's a shotgun. 
A shotgun? I think that has like hold on, let me take a look. Scatter ability. I don't know. Yeah, it might have scatter or something like that. Mm -hmm. So let me see here. Okay, Mossberg. Scatter. Do, 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 do. 500. Really good at fighting those damn replicators. Shotgun. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay, so it does have a scatter ability. But what does that mean? Uh, first snub. Uh, that's grenade. I assume it means I get a shot at everything. <laughs> uh, okay, shotguns. Fire a scatter weapon using a buckshot. Characters who are proficient with long arms may use their proficiency bonus to make attacks. Okay, but it doesn't tell me what scatter so, does. So, okay, this weapon fires pellets in a 45 degree cone within short range. Roll oh. attack and damage once and compare the attack roll to all targets within the area. They also wow. fire a slug instead. Okay. okay. Okay, so if you are doing your scatter shot, you can essentially hit um you can hit the one in front of you the one that dropped it zat the one that fired it zat at you but you also run the risk of hurting whoever is on the operating table as well they are no longer screaming by the way oh okay in, <laughs> just I mean, FYI. <laughs> is it not wrong for me to assume that that person is already dead um make me a quick perception check I mean, they're still as, as a Jaffa whose symbiote just died, it doesn't it normally release chemical that kills the Jaffa? It, so, yeah. so Jaffa symbiotes live in a pouch in like their abdomen. This, this is was a neck. symbiote that was in the back of their neck. Okay. All right. This is a and, full on gold. Oh, oh so that was not a gold. It could have been a tokra. Oh. Like a okay. Yeah, this, this person's dead. Okay. Oh, okay. Fire. Yeah, I, I, I would assume so. So yeah. I would yeah, I would fire at the other two, I guess. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So um scat I'm assuming. Oh my god. So the 12 is enough to hit. Um oh, so on, which one would you like it to hit? Um the one Wonderful. firing the zat. The zat. Okay, so the one on the the left. Okay, um, so you sh fire this this. It, it's a very loud like explosion, and all these projectiles kind of go everywhere. Um, the majority of them don't hit their targets. They just kind of embed in the wall behind this operating table. Some some of the the bullets embed into the dead body on the operating table as well. Um, but you do notice oh. that. Um, essentially you blow out this the 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 chest cavity of this Jaffa with um the Zat oh. and they fall to the ground dead. Very uh, dead. I wanna take the shotgun and kinda uh put it up as a bar and try to get um uh the staff guy in front of me mm -hmm. and uh try to uh I just I'm gonna say uh, what false god do you serve? Okay, okay. It doesn't respond. He seems pretty intent in like whacking you again. Um, next up is Fiddler. Okay, uh, Fid will pop around the corner looking for the the cloak guy. Doesn't see him. Uh, he'll target the one that Gorik is literally fighting. Like he's he's got his uh shotgun up in his face, and he'll try and take that one out. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and shoot. 16 for 15. That will absolutely hit the one in the front for 15. That, and I'm pretty sure he was already injured. Okay, so yeah, you, um, and this is with your sniper? Yeah, this is my rifle, yeah. Okay, yeah, you just kind of headshot straight through the, the, the eyes, just it's, it's yeah, right right over Gorik's shoulder. Yeah, just just kind of um the the Jaffa because Gorik has his shotgun up, right? And this Jaffa is kind of like going in for like a like a kind of like a baseball swing kind of thing mm -hmm. with his staff. And as he does that, and there's some space between um like Gorik and where you can see him, you just very quickly scope hit dead. 
anything else. Back into the hallway. Back into the hallway. Absolutely. You're okay. welcome. It is group two. The only Jaffa left in group two is the one that dropped his Zat. So he is going to dip to pick that up. Um, but he's not going to shoot with it. This time he's going to go for a melee attack against Jake since Jake is right there. Did shoot him in the arm. Yes, you, you did. did. Uh, so that is a strength check. Uh, does a 14 hit you, Jake? No, does not. Okay, so then um, he goes to essentially punch you, and you just, you take the blow. He, like, it, it seems like he might have lost a bit of his strength because he just saw two of his uh, companions die, kind of brutally. Um, that is that and jake it is your turn you have the guy with the wounded arm in front of you and you have a um guy with a staff kind of like behind you into the side oh geez well since everybody else is handling their guys okay um i guess with that guy in his brutal fight that's going on he's you know swinging taking the hit stepping back i think i'm gonna do a point blank burst into it with the absolutely absolutely oh if i can hit him geez four to hit so unfortunately a four does not hit you go oh. to um essentially you like jam the the muzzle of the gun into his his chest in an attempt to fire off and kill this guy but he just kind of like hand palms the the gun to the side and the <laughs> shot goes off on uh it it hits the wall behind you and and it's a very high-pitched metallic ringing that kind of happens but yeah. he <laughs> is Okay, for the moment. Ixora. Yes, that is that is me. I am. Um, mm -hmm. I do not wish to partake in the violence unless I absolutely necessary, and it doesn't seem particularly necessary right now, so I'm going to uh, go up to one of the occupied vats, because I'm, I'm just going to, like, boop, boop, boop behind them, yeah. and uh, see if those members of SGP-12 are alive, dead. What is this liquid? What are these vats? I'm going to science this up a little bit. Absolutely. So then in that case, go ahead and make me a science check. I would love to make you a science check. For a seven. Seven. Okay. So um, mysterious. So it's a little stressful you, with all the fire going on. There's the a lot going on. Yeah. So you can tell um, they're alive. They are not conscious. Okay. Um, you're not 100% sure, but your guess is that maybe these are some type of like stasis chambers. Okay. You've never really seen anything like this before in this form. So you're not 100% sure about that. Okay. That's me. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, then the Jaffa with the staff is going to take a swing at Gorik because he did just kill some people and he's going to make a strength check. Uh, an eight does not hit Gorik. Gorik is not the person to attack, apparently, but he's very threatening. So he misses. He swings wide and um, you, you kind of like... Um, um, accidentally you just kind of as you're bringing your your shotgun down from the guy that just died in front of you because a fiddler um your elbow just kind of like slams into him and slams him backwards and he's not able to get his his shot off on you gorik you are up all right um All right, I'll turn to him with the shotgun and say, drop your weapon and you may yet live. There At least no another response. few moments. There's no response from him and he does not seem to be backing down. Unfortunate. <laughs> 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 unfortunately an eight will not hit him he kind of he sees the shot coming and he is able to duck and dip to the side and avoids the blast Alrighty. also unfortunate yeah. very unfortunate and then um, i will uh take cover behind like a pillar or something okay 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So are you, in order to take cover behind something, you would have to leave his, um, his reach. So you would take an opportunity attack. A melee opportunity attack? Yeah, yeah, it's just a melee attack. Okay, not going to get hit by a staff blast. All right, I'll do that. <laughs> no, no, okay. <laughs> so he is going to... Oh, what the heck? There we go. 20, and that is a strength check. Uh, an 11 does not hit you, so he swings and just whiffs horribly. All right, yeah, you are able to duck behind one of the... Essentially one of the, um, like... Um, uh, pillars that has the, the people in them. Uh, Fiddler, it is your turn. I pop my head back out, side up, and I see Gork running away. Mm -hmm. And so I shoot the guy that's chasing him. Not running okay. away. Okay. Absolutely. 14 for 12. I'm, that I'm will hit. Positioning, not running away. It's okay. I got him for you. You're not going to be scared anymore. So you call that out and you, you know, you pull the trigger. Cool. And the one with the staff just clonks over. I'm going to hide back here again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> back in the hallway. Alrighty. I think okay. what... Yeah. There is one final Maybe not. Uh, Jaffa left. The one that Jake Miller uh, injured in his arm. And he is going to, since he has that zat in his hand now, he is going to fire at Jake. 22, 22. Does a 10 hit you, Jake? Okay. He misses horribly then in that case. And um, he he edges backwards. He doesn't leave your space so you don't get an opportunity attack. But he does edge backwards and he seems a little concerned. But he's not backing down. And it is your turn, Jake. Time to return the favor. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, yes, absolutely. So you... He steps back and you open fire and it's he drops like a sack of potatoes. He is dead, dead. Easy. Oh, 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 oh. I, I wouldn't actually do that. It's just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Then in that case, we are out of initiative. Is that um, all of them? Are so, we okay? <laughs> I do know that we are a little bit over time here. Um, we are wrapping up the episode. Are you guys okay with going a little bit longer? Or would you like to stop now and pick up next week? We're good. 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 Okay. Perfect. All right. So then you guys are out of initiative. What would you like to do? Is everybody okay? Anybody hurt? I'm fine. Uh, uh, Gorik looks scared. <laughs> 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 I started to look. <laughs> I, I, you were running. I uh, had to now, shoot the other one, just like I shot the first one. Now that I don't have to hide from fight, fire mm -hmm. and staff blasts and Zach blasts and, you know, things, I would like to go over to a control panel, the front of the, the vats, and, and see if I could learn more about them from anything that might be out there. Notes, computer system, whatever. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Can so Fiddler assist? Yeah, sure. Okay. Absolutely. So you um, on these vats, there are no control panels, but you okay. do see um, on now that you guys have a little bit more time to kind of examine this room mm -hmm. from where you guys entered on the right hand side, there are like, um, like workstations, like computer mm -hmm. stations. And you guys all you guys are familiar. Well, except Jake, maybe he might not quite recognize these right off the bat but this is ancient technology this is um these are ancient terminals you guys know that once they are activated they can be used by anybody and these terminals are activated okay um so you guys so this can... is wondrous level technology yes this okay. is this is this it's ancient it's okay high tech um well, i just i just learned that i have a, a an extra role that goes along when Ooh. i'm dealing with tech level four Ooh. or higher very nice. Yes, this is definitely high level shit. Um, okay. Go ahead and uh, whoever would like to roll it, you can roll a science or an investigation check, whichever you prefer. Yeah, let me make sure I got this right. And then, so one person will give advantage and the other person will roll. I will, I'll assist Fiddler. Yeah, let me, I'm just double checking to make sure I get this right because it's. Um... Nugget, I need you off my notes, please. Thank you. Oh, it's the Tolan thing. 
All right. Sorry, still learning. Totally. No, um, no first session. Okay, if ever I make an engineering check to discern the function of technology with a tech level of four or higher, I can add a plus TD to the check. Oh, yes. Okay, so you will add a tension die to your mm -hmm. roll. Um, this episode's tension die is a 1d6, which is just a standard tension. So it's just okay. a normal episode. You can add a d6 to your roll. Okay, so I'll roll my engineering, mm -hmm. which is a 21 Ooh. and... Four. 25. 25. Okay. So um, real quick before I get to describing what, you know, kind of is going on here, Gorik and Jake, what are you guys doing? Um, I guess after making sure the ones who attacked us are actually down and on the ground, probably go they over are. the table and try and check on the person. Okay. Yes, so the four Jaffa are on the ground are definitely dead. They are not coming back. Um, you go over to the person that is on this operating table um, and you see essentially what I described. They have this um, like metal like prongs holding open a, um, a wound from the base of their skull to in between their shoulder blades. You can see it's it's pretty graphic. You can see like the blood, spine, tendons, all of that. Um, you also see a dead, crushed Gua'uld symbiote just kind of laying there. Um, do you turn this person over? Yeah, gently. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So just very carefully, um, you are able to like detach them from that metal, those metal prongs and uh, roll them over. And you see that this is a woman. She is, um, uh, she's a Jaffa. She has that same symbol on her forehead that these four Jaffa on the ground have. Okay. Uh, can't look to Gorik. Have you ever seen something like this before? Heard of something like this? I... Why would they torture a Jaffa woman? So, Gorik. Why does the Jaffa woman have a symbiote in her neck? <laughs> so, yeah, Gorik, as a Jaffa yourself, you know that Gua Wolds cannot use Jaffa as hosts. Something in Jaffa physiology does not allow it. But they can do like the the, the symbiote pouch. That's they where they incubate symbiotes. Um, that is the only way a Jaffa can have like a Gua'uld in them. Gua'uld cannot meld with Jaffa as hosts. This is not something that should be possible. Mm. From my knowledge, I, that should not be possible. Is um. Some sort of experiment, perhaps. Yeah. Oh, the teams, the tubes. And on that note, um, so Fiddler and Ixora, you guys are both at, um, so there are three terminals here. You guys are kind of both at the wings, and then you guys both keep, like, alternating going to the middle one. Mm -hmm. Um you guys are able to determine that this is essentially, it's an ancient lab. Um, the ancients seem to have been doing some type of experiments with um, human, specifically human, genetic modification. Oh. This is uh, not alarming, but this is, this is unusual. Because you guys know, both of you being, you know, scientists and engineers and, you know, having knowledge of ancients and technology, you guys know that this is essentially a practice that um, is banned in ancient culture, like Ooh. genetic experiments, um, altering human or any DNA is, um, they've done it before and it's had disastrous results. So they banned it. It's not something that's allowed. Um you guys would also so know good. that there are several Gua'uld who have been known to attempt to create enhanced humans mm -hmm. with this method of genetic modification um, with the hope of having a more powerful host. 
the two big ones that come to mind are um, Nirti and Anubis himself, which uh, for those of you who don't know, Anubis is a half ascended, was a half ascended Gualwuld who um, it, he, he was a bad guy. He was a, he was a really bad guy. Um, you know that those two are the two big ones that have been like kind of striving for this genetic modification of human hosts. Um, uh, you guys, as you guys are kind of digging through all of these um, notes, and it's a, it's a little slow because the majority of it is in ancient. Um, mm-hmm. There is some like common translations, but it's majority in ancient. I'm going to assume that you guys both know how to read that as I'm science. pretty good with languages, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you guys see that uh, this is... Um, Essentially, they the research that you're finding here is um, they were trying to find a way to study human physiology to find out why Gua'ulds can host or can meld with humans. What physiology links to that? Um, with that knowledge you guys can come to the conclusion as you guys kind of, as you're working here, Jake and Gork talking that maybe that hooded figure was trying to figure out how to meld a Gua'uld with a Jaffa host. That's the conclusion that you guys come with. Um, As you guys are doing this though, you do find the controls for Mm -hmm. the stasis chambers and that's what they are. They are stasis chambers and you are able to start the sequence to uh, release them. After about 10 minutes, the liquid is drained and like the door slides open and all four of them come to and they kind of stumble out of their tubes. Um, They look very confused. They um, don't quite know what's going on. The male um, uh, kind of steps up and he steps in between you guys and the three members of the team and he's like, um, I see that you'll have the you're you're from Phoenix, but what? Why are you here? What? How? How did you get here? Where? What? Why? Are, how'd they die? Um, what's going on? I think the medical team should have a look at you. Yes, Doctor Abar would very much like to look them over. I'm sure. Uh, uh, Jake, why don't you take that one? That seems like more right up your alley. Yes. Uh, is he, what's your rank again? Uh, just lieutenant. Yes, Pretty much lieutenant the lowest Miller. officer that yeah. you can be. Yes, Lieutenant Miller. I, but you are the wise. officer. And uh, mm-hmm. while he's briefing them kind of like on what happened, I'm going to yeah. look for that, uh, go to that part of the wall that seemed odd earlier and see if I can feel around for it. Now that I know it's ancient in base to try to use yes. that to try to open that up. Absolutely. Go ahead and make me an investigation check for that secret room. Um, Certainly. The remainder of you, um, the man kind of uh, collects himself and he sees that, um, Jake, you seem to be the military commander here. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he gives you a nod and he says, uh, my name, my name's Ian, Ian Hoodman. Um, I'm the, well, I'm not the leader of this group. I was the second in command, but then um, our commander died when they were doing their experiments and um uh, how did you guys get we're, here wait we we'll, we came through the stargate um ian good to meet you it's, it's jake miller it's my team we were called out here for sgp 12 was under fire it disappeared from the dhd outside the gate you know the big dial device um right right uh yeah yeah that we he kind of looks over to the the three women with him and they all seem to be like like this strikes a chord of recognition with them and they're like yeah yeah we we managed we got out how did we get out i don't i i remember running and and they were following us and we got away for a while and then they found us again and we we, yeah, we were able to call, we called the Stargate, but they took away our RDCs so we couldn't go through. I I don't know how we got back here. Do, 
Do you know you wouldn't know how we got back here? It's just okay. It's us. okay, Ian. Uh, we we just found you here as this. You said that your your lead was tortured and killed. Have you uh, been experimented on any? Have you been on this table? You've been operated, injected, anything done to you? Not that I can remember. Um, well, our leader, he um, I, I don't. I don't remember a lot of what happened. I don't remember ever being on a table. Um, All right, well, hey, look, it's uh, here or there. We'll get you checked out when we get back to base. Right. right. Best thing we need to do is get out of here sooner than later. Assuming yeah. Ixora and Fiddler are done over there. Guys, how you doing? Uh, at this point, Fiddler has gone over to Ixora. Like, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, what you doing? I'm considering pulling out my C4. Oh, 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 oh. I, that's my, that, look, if anybody gets to blow up anything, it's me, all right? I am also right, proficient right, in explosives. That is good to know. I, maybe I, we shouldn't blow up anything yet, guys. Yeah, why? Why are you There is a here? secret uh, or hidden compartment or room. There is a space behind this wall that I am trying to access. Right here? Yes. Here. Okay, how far, how deep it, could you know how deep it is? Dunk, dunk, dunk. Walk over to the different Dunk, dunk, dunk. It, it just, it doesn't sound super thick. It sounds like, um, it, there's definitely a room back there. Something back there. Um, Fiddler would try and take a look to see if, if he can yeah. figure out <laughs> if there's a door or something. Investigation check, please. If there's not a door. C4. 14. <laughs> I have another, I have another trick. 14. Possibly. So 14 is enough. You do find um, there is a um, like a, a it's a metal room, right? Mm -hmm. There are like sheets that are and there are, are um, my words are failing me. I'm sorry. Um, like, yeah, pan like there's there's like uh, paneling. Like, yeah, indents. paneling. They're yeah. indents. There's there's like crevices and shit, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, there, there's one that you can you can push in. You can push it in and it opens up the fucking door. <laughs> okay. I just, I just hadn't fondled enough of the wall to find it yet. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You just were you were on the opposite side of the door. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fiddler fiddles. You're mm -hmm. able to to push in that particular indentation and panel, and the door, much like the door outside, but way easier, slides open <laughs> to the side. Um. You see it lights up as the door opens. Um, you see what seems to be like a um kind of like a like a panic room is the kind of the kind of yeah. vibe that you get from it. There's like a bed, there's a desk, there's um like a stash of rations and foods and stuff. Um it's very sparse. It doesn't seem to be um in too much disarray, it does look like somebody has been living here, but mm. it's not, um, it doesn't look like they were using it as a panic room, more as a bedroom. Okay. Like they weren't, well, they weren't, like, secluded in here, if that I wanna, makes sense. I want to see if there's anything interesting in the desk. Absolutely. So, um, with Fiddler's assistance, you are able to, um, rifle through the desk and you find, like, a data pad. Ooh. Um, that has notes written in Gua'uld, which um, I'm going to say you are not super familiar with, um, unless you can think of a reason why you would be super familiar with Gua'uld. Uh, getting there. I would say Xora's still learning. Okay, so, um, yeah, beginner. She loves languages, yeah. Okay, okay. So then in that case, um, as a beginner with Gua'uld, you're able to... Gorf um, might be like, able to read it. <laughs> yeah, he might. Um, you're able to swipe through some of the slides and you see words that kind of line up with that ancient... Um, Probably the Gua'uld's uh, notes on the weird genetic testing that they've been trying. Yeah. We'll yeah, take that's those. that's what it seems to be. Okay, okay, we'll bring it back to, to, to the Phoenix site. That's probably valuable information. Absolutely. Okay, so is there anything else that you guys would like to do in here before you head back to the Stargate? Warwick is checking for implantation wounds. On I was actually going to ask. The <laughs> rest of the SG team. SG, the SG team. SG okay, team absolutely. 12. 
they are um they don't fight you on it they're they're totally okay with it go ahead and roll me um a perception or an investigation check whichever you prefer better with perception here not that great at it it looks good you're fine go you're fine go you're fine. <laughs> yeah you you don't notice anything um they don't seem any worse for wear there's no like scars there's no injuries there's no um they seem fine I just put them. I have a look. if we got what we came for SG-12, or what remains yes. of them, has been located. We need to get back and get back to command, debrief on what has happened I, here. I, I only hesitate to mention that we never figured out how they I, were transported. Oh, that we is can figure that point. out of the safety of the command base, I would at least think. Guys. Or another team can do recon on this location afterwards. But, but, oh, all right. I mean, if, if it got them once, it could get us again. So I'm just Oh, that concerned. is a valid concern. <laughs> Hey, Are there technology. any more rooms? <laughs> Doesn't seem to be. Can you guys find anything that you guys have found? The technology that you guys have been looking under at? the pillow <laughs> and under the mattress, because sometimes people hide things there. There could be I, like the transporty remote. The, the control panels were nothing but uh, medical data. I nothing that would transport people. So uh, oh, uh, there must have been another ship. Must Pull up be. my. My notebook it's actually it's an actual pad of paper and pen and uh, i'm going to go over to one of the deceased jaffa on the floor whose symbols we could not identify and i'm going to sketch it out so that way we can bring it back to the phoenix uh, site while she's Perfect. doing that i'm filleting one off another guy <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> yes roll me a survival check <laughs> look if you don't know how to flay a, a <laughs> symbol off of jaffa's forehead I'm what, what are you doing with your life Christ. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> easy enough. Not a problem. You were able to get a um it's gross, but you're able to get a slab of skin. I didn't expect to not be gross. No, no. <laughs> you're, you're, you're able to get a slab of, of forehead skin that has this symbol on it. Um I will have that that I'll have a sketch up of that symbol for you guys next week. Ooh. Unfortunately, I don't. I don't have it completely You're fine. down. I'm just, just so excited. Yes. So, um, next steps. What are y'all doing now? Heading back. Yeah, uh, I guess. I'd say yeah. I'd say if we can't search and find anything obvious that would be anything extra news, that's we gotta go. We gotta get. Oh, I will pick back. up these Zat guns that Ooh, yes. the Jafar okay. were carrying and. Very carefully hold them and follow behind the SG P twelve team. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. It, it took it took hours to get out, but I think it's good for us to push on if everybody can. And push yeah. Back. Yeah. It took you guys about um, six six and a half hours to get out here, but um, the the SGP team they want to leave. They are happy with pushing. <laughs> they don't want to stay are... the night. They don't want to. No, you know. no, they're 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 done with the swamps. Stay the they night hate in it. The torture um, labs. Yeah, no, no, no. They are they're fine to go back. So another six hours passes, and you guys are able to get back to the Stargate. Um, you punch in your uh, the gate address that you guys are all familiar with. Um, I'm assuming that Miller would be the one to send in his IDC since he's kind of the de facto leader of this group. Mm -hmm. as the um Tauri military person um sounds good and you the you guys are able to step through the gate and head back on in to the command center that's um, when the Zaytark goes crazy and starts shooting everybody now yeah, <laughs> murder uh so you guys are greeted by a full medical team who um you kind of whisk away SGP12 um they I will go along with them absolutely you uh you i can, have you holes are, that were not there injured. when i left yeah they they so they they're concerned <laughs> they're, about SGP the, there are band-aids but i imagine they've soaked through by now probably um, probably some, some little so, red band-aids <laughs> yeah they they whisk off sgp 12 one of the nurses sees you and kind of like ushers you along as well um fiddler miller and gorick i'll you wave are... goodbye to the rest of my team as i go 
I feel like that was a mission well, we, well done. We should probably all get medically checked anyways. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it is standard procedure that you have to get checked by, um, you have to have essentially a physical every time you come back and you guys will do that. But before you guys are whisked off, um, general lawyer comes up to you and, all right, uh, what happened? I'm glad you brought, mm, looks like most of them back. Oh, well, the, the lot, general, especially for our first time out. Um, uh, secret ancient technology. Definitely oh. some of that. Okay. Um, we picked up their tracks outside the uh, DHD, just outside right. the gate, but they didn't seem to go anywhere, so we followed it. And uh, Gork and Xora were able to find a hidden force field barrier after many hours of walking with a uh, facility, door, ship, something okay. behind it. Uh, it's a facility. Facility. Medical facility, to be precise. Yeah, there was torture in there. Somebody had their this Jaffa woman had her back played open, and then there was a symbiote. It's not designed to be a torture device. It's more of a medical study thing, but it was being used by a person. That. Huh. Okay. All right. Well, you guys go get your physical done. Um, I will expect your reports on my desk in the morning, but for now, get your physical take some rest, and then take some time to write up your reports. Job all done. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm ex excited to see what you guys will be able to do in the future for us. You guys did well. Good job. It was an honor. Thank you, sir. He gives you guys a nod, and then he will disappear. And with that, unless there's anything else you guys would like to do, I'm going to say we are going to go ahead and... Yes. Okay. Uh, right before, I want to go up to the gate room and say, Tokro, whose symbol is this? And just throw it on the table. Oh, God. To, to Heim? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Um, so... <laughs> Slack. Slats you... down on the table. Yeah, yeah. You see you see Heim. He's, um, he's sitting at a computer typing away at something, and he kind of, like, hears you come up, and he's like, huh, what? Oh, gee, what is that? And he just kind of like freaks out a little bit. And um, wh why is there skin? What is what what is that? And he just kind of goes in and he's looking at it. He's he's not touching it, but he is like he's looking at it down on the desk. He's like, I I don't know the symbol. Danos, do you know this symbol? And you see a golden flash of eyes <laughs> as um uh as Danos appears and he is hmm. It is not something I recognize, which is concerning. The eyes flash gold, and then Haim is back. Yeah, if Danis doesn't know, I don't think many people would know, because, like, he's super old, so, uh, like, he's, like, super old, so it's got to be, like, a new Gualwald or something, maybe? Or maybe, like, a really old one that was kind of wiped and then came back. I don't know. I have no idea. Danis doesn't know either, so... Sorry, Gork. Except the skin. <laughs> Gross. Like, can, 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 do you, uh, I'll clean it up. It's fine. There's like blood. Yeah, he just walks blood. away. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. Imagine, like, no. okay. Gork's got like a collection and he's like tanned them and there's just a bunch like, he's got like a scrapbook journal of all these different <laughs> symbols. Or like no. like Daryl Dixon's ear like necklace, a, like but a, it's it's, like a stamp it's Jaffa book. symbols. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Jaffa symbol stamp book. Stamp book. Like a stamp collector. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay. <laughs> All oh. right. Well, that is where we are going to end tonight's episode. Thank you guys so much for playing tonight. I had a blast. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close myself out, and then I'll, you know, link it on over to Lindy, and she can go through everybody else um i am nuggetosaurus you can find me here on mondays playing in our mondays in alexandria game as well as uh when i gate master on tuesdays uh with our stargate flames of hope game um you can also find me here on the occasional saturday when we play aliens hopefully that'll be starting up soon again no idea what's going on there but it'll be fun um and yeah next week i will give you a teaser for next week Next week's episode is Fragile Alliance. Fragile, fragile, whatever. Alliances. So just, you know, stew on that and see, you know, see if you maybe come up with some ideas of uh, what's uh, what next week is going to be. Gorg punching Tokra. Yes, all of them. Um, my 
favorite part, um, I really liked Ixora just walking into the invisible <laughs> steel wall. I thought that was hilarious. Um, Fiddler with his sniper shots. That was pretty badass. It's kind of how I imagined he's like a chaotic dude, but then he's like really good at military stuff. Um, Gorik with the, with the, the, I mean, just, I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. <laughs> Um, and then I, th- I really like I thought how... about doing it, but then I yeah. like, Sora wouldn't. That's <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> um, and then I really like how Miller kind uh, like he took charge and he was trying to be a leader. And I'm very excited to see how he grows over the seasons. And thank you guys for playing. I had a blast. Thank you for gate mastering us. Um, yeah, my favorite parts. Oh no, wait, I'm gonna go last. Let's go in reverse order because that's funsies. Uh, Jake Miller, how was this mission? How was your first mission, Jake? Uh, Jake had a good time. Sure, uh, it was a great start. A little rocky road as we got going, but he's we're figuring each other out. We're figuring out the gameplay too. So it was fun. It's cool. I like the world. This is going good. That's fine. We didn't die things were great uh so yeah favorite part was probably the scalping and taking the symbol that was funny but but the the creepy description of the room with the like the back flayed open i've seen that in too many horror games and just like yeah i could see this but yeah mm, 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 the mental picture was there thing was shine up out to six thanks everybody for watching and uh that was great let's do it again all right Someone who I have a feeling will do several things again uh, is Gorik. Gorik, how was your first mission? Oh, very good. Uh, quite the success. Um, uh, I I really enjoyed the uh, fight, fighting the turrets. We did that uh, the smart way. That was nice. Um, I liked uh, just I like how. Jake would probably do fine if he was just commanding normal humans, but it's like he has no no idea what to do uh, commanding these aliens. So uh, I I I really want to see how that develops, and um, yeah, I just really enjoyed my time. Uh, and uh, I'm D20 Coup de Gras. You can find me here uh, playing Mondays, Tuesdays, and. Uh, you can find me almost all the time playing uh, uh, GTA RP uh, all the other days. So uh, please come by and watch. Thank you. Uh, how does this mission rank for Fiddler compared to all the other days of missions that Fiddler has been on? First mission. Oh, SGT3. this one. This one's going great. I like no one died. I didn't blow up a single thing accidentally, and I actually made mechan- made things work the way they're supposed to. So you know, I- I'll give it a seven out of ten. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, uh, ten out of ten if I get to blow something up and it works. But uh, beyond that, oh, I got to- I got to shoot my gun a few times, so it's really good times. But uh, yeah, no, uh, I- I'm deception check. I'm playing Fiddler of the Chaos Gremlin uh, with a long rifle. Uh, it's great. Love doing that. Um, he had an absolute blast. I had a blast. This is a great time. Uh, favorite things, Gorik slicing off Jaffa symbols, <laughs> Ixor walking face forward into uh, weird technology, and then going right through the door when it opens, too, to get shot immediately. Uh, welcome to combat. Uh, and then not learning anything after that, walking into the next hallway, but this time behind Gorik, not in front of him. So a little bit. Step steps in steps. the right direction, baby steps, perfectly fine. I love the fact the image in my head of Jake and Fiddler discussing tactics, how we're going to approach the room while Gorik and Ixor <laughs> just walk right by. So uh I thought that was a great scene. Um I, I loved everything, everything you put together for us, Nugget. It, it was very, very thematic, very, very atmospheric. I enjoyed it. Um, I could I could definitely see it all happening, and it felt like an SG episode. I loved it. Um uh, you can find me here on Mondays. I promise we're starting back up pretty soon. We're missing it. We're missing a player that we really want to come back. And so we're giving him as many chances as we can before we really roll into the Festival of Merit on Monday. Uh, we're about to we're about to really kick into the campaign. It's going to be very exciting. It's going to be quick paced. It's going to move us off into the world. And we're going to see a lot of fun places uh, in the world of Exandria. It's going to be a good time. Um, and on Tuesdays here for this and for future things coming up uh, uh you know beyond our sg program and then on saturdays when 
when our missing player comes back to lead us through aliens. Uh, can't wait. Um, this is fun. Thanks. Thank you. And that just leaves me. My favorite moments. Um, I, I do like uh, Lieutenant Miller, Jake, being just... I agree with, with uh, D20, Coup de Gras example of just not knowing what to do with this group of aliens. Like, they were all, mi like, really trained military people. Smythe, you know, fine, smooth, oiled machine. This is not that. Um, it, it, you know, Ixor is waiting for directions, but if she's not told to not do something or to do so, you know, she's, she's learning things. She's a little new to this whole field work scenario. Um... I got shot a couple times tonight, so that was fun. I was like, let's do it early so she learns sooner rather than later. Um, Gorik flaying the forehead off was great. And Fiddler actually being like, oh, maybe we don't need to pull out the C4. Uh, let's see if I can find this secret door. Um, just so many little good quips and moments from each character. I loved it. Um, I'm, I'm definitely having fun getting to play Exora and my mental image of certain things, like walking in behind Gork doesn't do a whole lot of good because she's still like a foot taller than him. Um, <laughs> it's just, and uh, of course the fight was super fun. I liked the, like the, everyone's like super military trained. I'm just like, I'm just gonna hide behind this thing. Wish that we didn't have to do violence. And I'm thinking Exora might request a Zat rather than um, a gun for her standard issue because she doesn't want to hurt people, but you can just neutralize them with the Zat without killing them. So, uh, you know, there's that. So that's a that's a thing she might she might do in the future. Also, I'm just picturing it like the TV show, and I just imagine when Gorok slaps down the symbol and you say, huh, of the, the Tok'ra guy, you just cut to Exor just calmly sketching it down into, like, a f mission report while getting treated in the med bay, like, just... And then cutting back... To and be like, oh, this symbol's so interesting. Yeah, um, loved it, loved it, loved it. The visuals were great. The pacing was was delightful. I had so much fun. I cannot wait for next week's mission. But before that, you will catch us on Monday. We hope for the new batch Mondays in Alexandria, cause well, they're super fun too. Um, yeah, thanks for coming out and hanging out and playing and gate mastering. Um, until next time, have fun and play games.